testing one two one two going on what's going on this is Ola coming to you live from my Empire Pro Studios uh, let's just make sure all is well all right all right good 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 we're live we're struggle streaming we're struggle streaming so we're struggle streaming a little bit I'm not sure how this this is going to pan out I'm not sure um, but I'm gonna try my best uh, because this particular live stream was scheduled since yesterday so it's a little weird to be frank with you it looks like uh, uh, we're running into a lot of issues with the internet in this area it's going up and down it looks good right now but then it goes down so I'm not sure what's going on um, maybe i may have to reschedule this and maybe restart my module and and and, and then come back uh, so what i would suggest is i'm going to go back okay because i want to make sure that this this show was supposed to be a really really good one um i don't know you know it looks like it's just going up and down i'm, I'm monitoring things here and it looks like i'm freezing in and out i'm not sure uh let me see if it's going let me see if it's a little stable if it does it again, uh, I would definitely have to go uh, restart things. And all right, so it seems a little stable right now. 
And by the way, if you're listening to me, uh, please make sure you let me know who you are. Uh, we got some really interesting topic to cover today. Let me see here. Let's see. Let's see. All right. It looks like it's a little stable. All right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going up and down. So what I want to do is I'm going to come back in about, uh, I don't know, another 10 minutes. Um, yeah, this is kind of crazy. Let me see. Why don't I do this? I'll play the countdown again, right? I'm going to go try to restart the internet. Uh, hopefully it'll be quick enough, and then we'll, we'll do it from there. How is that, right? Maybe we can save this uh, particular stream. It looks like it's just going up and down, up and down. Yeah, let's see here. I'm going to see if it happens one more time, okay? Today, we're, absolutely, we're talking about, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about quite a few things, okay? Yeah, it's going up and down. So let me play, let me play the countdown. Let me see if I can keep the live stream going. And then we'll come back uh, and address things, okay? So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Let's see.
Let's do one, two, one, two. Testing one, two, one, two. Alright, 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 welcome back, we made it, we made it, we made it back, alright, good, good. So it looks like things are stable right now, I'm actually trying to test the speed, and the speed is giving me false information, but it looks like things are good on the monitor. So, uh, let's just uh, go ahead and get into the business of things, I don't understand uh, why this is happening. Uh, it's a little weird. I don't know why it's happening, but it is happening. So we're going to try to make the most out of it. All right. So welcome back to Man of Prestige. Man of Prestige, you are and maybe mother of man of prestige, right? That's the whole point of this channel. We want to make the most out of it. We want to make sure that we are talking about men issues here, but more so in terms of uh, actions, watching actions, reactions, because I believe your reactions are your responsibilities at the end of the day, especially as a man in the society that we live in, we don't get to say, unfortunately, okay, I know that it may come off as unfair, uh, we don't get to say uh, some things uh, are just unfair, uh, you know, fair is fair, we don't, we don't get to push those rhetorics, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately, you have to uh, be the best that you can be in the society that we live in today all right so today we're going to be touching on things like we're going to talk about we're going to talk a little bit about Tariq Nasheed, O'Shea Duke Jackson we're going to talk about uh, a young lady 42 years old uh, Kemi Adetiba who is uh, one of the top directors uh, movie directors in Nigeria and on Netflix uh, she's just got proposed to at the age of 42 we're going to talk about that uh, with respect to Rolo Tomasi, we're going to talk about Afiz from from the roommates. We're going to talk about Jen, Jen uh, on the block with Jen. We're going to talk about how she had a fantastic show yesterday. You guys definitely should check that out. Uh, but we're going to be talking about some of the things that went down on that five hours live stream. Uh, we're going to talk about DJ Academics. We're going to talk about Jordan Peterson. Um, we're going to talk about a few things, right? So we're going to be calling cap 
on a lot of things okay so it's going to be a lot of fun calling cap on uh, some of the videos we're going to be reacting to, to today all right so uh thank you again for stopping by uh thank you for hanging out with me please make sure you like share and subscribe to what we have going on here because i guarantee you we're not going to stop we're going to keep bringing the heat into the man space or manosphere or whatever you want to call it i am not i would never officially be a part of the manosphere it's just too much going on and we don't know what this freaking stand for so it's kind of hard to uh make any kind of stand around that what i can tell you is that i will always be a part of the man community in terms of youtube and bringing uh some kind of value into this space so I am I am really excited about what we have going on today. With that being said, let's get started. And these are sizable books. They are minimum of 200 pages. Uh, you can download them absolutely for free uh, by simply going to, for example, this one, you just go to getmymarriageback.com, smartrealestatewholesaling.com, uh, realestatemoneysecrets.com. So yes, I am a three times author. And those books are out there for your, for your consumption. And they are also available everywhere on Amazon, anywhere they would pick up books so in case you prefer a fiscal book like that all right welcome back welcome back so we're talking about rollo tomasi rollo tomasi is the is the author of a book called the rational mail i think he published the book back in 2013 in recent times the book is getting some more popularity uh, because of things like clubhouse because of youtube and then also he's also going viral on uh as we speak is going viral on the because of his podcast and the clips that he's putting out there uh rollo tomasi to me is an interesting creature an interesting human being uh i've read the book uh almost done to be honest with you and uh the book has some fantastic points to it and I think the best of Rolo Tomasi can be found in the book. I don't think um, the his podcast is going to do him uh, too good in terms of uh, the credibility and what he brings. I do think he has he's found quite a little bit of balance. And uh, but I think one thing he can work on is uh, is his assumptions on human beings and. Uh, uh, it's a lot of assumptions there. Uh, when it comes down to factual, when it comes down to empirical data as usual, uh, he knows what he's talking about. Um, but I think like many men, as he would admit to himself, uh, with many men, the problem is in application, application to real life. And that's what we're having problems with, with Rolo Tomasi. That's what I have problem with, right? I think he's... Uh, when it comes to his book, it's pretty on, on point with uh, some of the observations it's made over the years in terms of uh, intersexual relationship, intergender relationships, and things like that. But in recent times, it's picked fight, unnecessary beefs with some uh, public figures. Uh, you know, um, I understand it a little bit. When you label people blue pill or you label them beta or... Uh, uh, even though those things are not necessarily a, cr a crime, uh, none of those things are necessarily a crime. Uh, people tend to take an offense because you're telling them almost they feel like you're saying they're less than. And it doesn't have to be. But again, everything is in tone. Everything is in uh, your demeanor, your decorum when you're saying these things. And Rolo seems like he doesn't understand that. And that's kind of weird. But let me play some of the clips here that I feel like... Uh, will explain what I am talking about and let's uh, let's get into it let's get let's get started right away rationality of empiricism of reason will always sound like anger it will always sound like hate it will always sound like bitterness or eh, you know it will so that already right off the back doesn't make any sense sound like anger sound like bitterness sound like Ugh. those things sound like emotion they don't sound like rationalizing anything Let's keep going. Always sound like there is some sort of deeper seated problem to a generation. There's usually deeper seated problems. When you get into a space where you feel the need as a human being to rationalize everything, that's precisely part of emotionalism. 
And this is the problem that we're having in this conversation. The idea of discounting feelings and emotions always backfires because you're dealing with human beings with the very nature of emotions, compassion, right? The need to be right, all of these different things, right? that has been raised born raised and and acculturated and you know basically steeped in emotionalism for its entire life you will never you will never win a an emotional argument with rationality and reason and you will never win a precisely so he's hit the nail on the head right there when somebody is speaking from quote unquote trying to be rational and the other person is just being a human being emotional human being so as opposed to the way he said it like it's almost like something is wrong with emotions right when you're do when you when you understand that right uh suddenly things will change uh change dynamics very quickly right so yeah that's kind of interesting rational argument with emotionalism and that's where the disconnect happens and i made that point in the in the the, uh, the michael the last video that i did on friday I try to make that point. I'm trying to gonna I'm gonna repeat it here because I'm gonna start doing this here in just a moment here, because this is feels before reels, and the larger we get, the bigger the narrative, the bigger the uh, the uh, the attention that a lot of the stuff of the topics that I've been talking about, like I said, for over 20 years, the larger the attention we get, whether it's me or anybody else, the larger it gets, the more we're going to have to deal with that emotionalism versus reason that's exactly what happened with matt walsh and the beer so emotionally versus reasoning uh it's, it's a big battle of that going on and it's kind of funny that people that claim to be more rational uh, are usually expressing all of this different uh data factual points from a place of emotions okay and i'm going to show you tons of examples of that today as a matter of fact without any further ado let me show you uh a video clip of exactly a lot of things you're going to see today. Yeah. So that is what you're going to see a lot of today. He just mentioned Michaela, right? He just mentioned Michaela Peterson, who is the daughter of uh, uh, Peterson. And in the last, I don't know, in the last month or so, there's a lot of uh, uh, back and forth uh, beef. beef. As a matter of fact, I watched uh, uh, the, the podcast of Michaela interviewing um, Rolo uh, in the last, uh, like, a, like a month ago or so. After Rolo had already dragged her, dragged her from a lot of assumptions that he made just off of the uh, clips that he saw online. Now, granted, whatever you see online is basically what we make of, and that's just what it is. And a lot of times, uh, if you're assessing things that by people you don't know online, uh, you may end up speaking out of context. And yes, you could be wrong, just like I could be wrong here as well with my assessment sometimes. But I can only speak from what I know, and that's why. I uh, I call the reaction segment out of context. All right, so uh, we're, we're going to see a lot more examples of what I am talking about today. But before we get into that, there's this young lady that I wanted to show you. Her name is, uh, like I said earlier, I was going to uh, talk about her. Uh, let me see. Her name is Kemi Adetiba, this young lady right here, right? So she's... Um, She's a uh, director in Nigeria, and uh, she was proposed to, right? Let me show you a clip of that. Um, she's 42 years old, and she's the she's a typical situation that a Rolo Tomasi will basically uh, call a woman who has hit the wall, right? Uh, now, he, let me just play that really quickly. Now, he, he would not, he said women created the hit the wall phrase right and i believe that that women created the hit the wall phrase right so but this is the young lady being proposed to at the age of 42 years old this happened i don't know i think like a month ago but she just released the news yesterday <laughs> Uh, 
So why why am I talking about this young lady again? We're talking about women at the wall, right? And I wanted to take some time. That's basically pictures of you know proposal and all those different things that of uh, of this young lady. But there's something I wanted to speak to that uh, that has to do with this, and uh, and this is uh, uh, one of the biggest topic that I think uh, Rolo has done a great job covering. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen with you, and then let's talk about a woman who has hit the wall. I'm going to read uh, from the article that he wrote on his blog, and I am neither agreeing or disagree with him. Where I think he really uh, is missing it in a lot of his assessment is the idea that there's this exclusive, uh, mutual exclusive thing between rationalism and emotionalism. I don't think they're mutually exclusive, okay? As long, the idea of rationalizing something, for the most part, as, for, as long as we're talking about human beings, uh, it usually involves some level of emotions too, right? So it's kind of hard to separate that. And I've heard him, to be fair, I've heard him uh, admitted to that, okay? So let me go ahead and, and share this with you. Um, this is the article that he wrote about um, the wall, a woman who has hit the wall, and also a man who has hit the wall that is also a thing but before i get into 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 that you see this uh curve right here this is essentially what he, he published some few years back about the the man hitting the wall and the woman hitting the wall as you can see the pink uh mountain or bell over there is the woman so a woman is expected by Rolo, according to Rolo, to hit the wall at around about 30. Now, what does he mean by that, right? Is that across board? Because usually people's defense at this point, or the lady's defense at this point, give me one second. Let me just go ahead and and publish this real quickly. Let's see. Just to make sure that we get this word out there. Okay. All right, good. All right, good. Just wanted to make sure we get that out there. All right, good. So, um, one of the major issues uh, is that people push back at this. You know, obviously, uh, when people feel like it applies, they will attack back, right? Uh, but Again, uh, this is just something to be aware of, you know, it's not the reality of everyone's world. Uh, it's more so a general thing when you start looking at the statistics and the data. And it's also a good thing to be aware of, you know. Now, I don't think you should project this too much into your life because this can easily become fear in your heart and it can actually make you act, act against your own will. So that's the bell curve right there. Now, the explanation of the bell curve is what I want to, uh, it's called the wall, right? You can see that woman at the wall right there. Um, so this is a, a, a response on, an, on a comment to him, right? Uh, yeah, it's a term, that means hit the wall. Uh, I have seen before arriving at this blog, but I've never heard in reality. So like a lot of things that Rolo Tomasi will say, uh, you may never hear these things in, in real life, right? And that's one of the reasons why people push against it. That's one of the reasons why I think uh, a lot of the message or rationalize, rationalism around it is flawed because it attempts to uh, discount emotion tremendously knowing fully well that human beings are emotional beings. All right, so I always attribute it to a woman losing her looks, but to place it at exactly 30, again, this is uh, the pushback, seems to me to be precise, too much of a precise calculation, right? So here's the, the fear of decay. Underneath the obvious utility of the wall, as an epithet, it's a more painful truth, the inevitable decay of women's sexual appeal. So there's no way. The problem with this is that when you're speaking, when you go into women's space to go preach this at them, uh, it tells me that you don't truly really understand women. Okay, uh, that's that's what it tells me, and that's much more of a bigger deal than any kind of decay you may be trying to explain here. If you get in front of a woman, you argue with her about this, you don't understand women, and that's more of a problem.
okay? And the, the fact that a woman hit some kind of wall, biologically speaking, right? Uh, a sexual mating, desirability, blah, 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 whatever, all those kind of things. While they could be factual, the fact that you put yourself in a position to have to argue with women about this tells me that you lack social skills, and it tells that's much more important to me than the facts uh, that we have here. And this is the problem that I see in a lot of men these days. I see them uh, going about uh, YouTube, uh, you know, talking about you know this, that, arguing points that ultimately doesn't make sense to the people they are arguing with. That's lack of social skills. So as you can see, I'm literally going to skip through all of this because I don't think it matters that much in life. In life, if anything, I think this is doing more damage than it's helping people. I think there are people that it helps because you're going to have somebody that will come back and say, hey, it's helping some people. I get that. But it's actually going to do more damage than it's helping anyone. All right. So that's that with that. Uh, this, uh, let me see here. So that's the news with Kemi Ade. Congratulations to Kemi Ade Tiba, by the way. But I don't think ladies, I don't think ladies should wait around in the hopes that, you know, I, one of the things I saw yesterday in the comment area is that God's time is the best. While that statement could be true, it's a belief system. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, the reality is that a lot of people are going to be single for the rest of their lives. And I say that with respect to please don't make this a don't turn this to fear in your heart. It's just that if you look around you, right, you can see exactly what I am talking about. How many 42-year-old single ladies do you know that are getting engaged? Just look around you and make sure you look properly, right? So does that mean it's not possible? No, I think it's possible. And I think you should always pursue possibilities rather than probabilities. That's precisely why I will not be wasting too much time on this article or the bell curve or the woman hitting the wall or anything. I don't want to spend that much time on it. I don't think it does you that much service. But you should be aware that um, if you're meeting people, right, there's something that some people call the vetting, my my vetting game is too tight. So my, I actually have a video here that I want to play for you. Uh, my vetting game is tight. When your vetting game is too tight, you may end up, you may, may be the keyword, you may end up missing out on life and love. Let me play this video for you really quick where you see exactly what I am talking about. Let me hope I can find it. Let's hope I can find this video. There you go. Oh, my vetting game is strong. All right, let's watch this. <laughs> yeah. Logic knocking them down. You need to stop it, Cap. Stop it. Cap. Y'all, wait, you, so y'all really act like you, so you tell me you just, you, Mr. Logic. Okay, so what's your vetting process to know which one can come in, which one can't? Bro, my vetting process so strong. I told you, I look at everything. I eliminated a chick. Like I mean, other than, I mean. Other he looks at everything. Now, if I was, if I were to guess, right? If I were to guess right now, I will uh, and and bet that Mr. Logic was uh, this gentleman that keeps coming on these different shows, right? If I was to bet, he's a single man. So if you got married successfully, uh, right timing, you're not too old. It's ideal age. Ideal age right now, average is 28 something for men. That's the average time that men get married. Let's say. A little bit above that, 32, 34 years old, you're already married with a few kids, right? And you now say, oh, my vetting game is so strong. Then I can say, hey, you're speaking from experience, but you're still a single man. You're still out here on the streets and you say my vetting game is strong. What that, that potentially could mean that you have zero tolerance, okay, for just a regular human being because every human being has flaws, right? So it could mean, it doesn't mean it has to mean, I'm just saying, right? So again, vetting game. A lot of women have just as much as men have. They have vetting game and they have unrealistic expectations of other human beings. And they call that vetting, right? Other than the oh, booty, wait, Mr. Wait, Martin. wait, just no. Listen, just that. Listen, you listen. Said my vetting process is so strong. <laughs> listen, you see, if y'all want to know, I vet everything. I vet from the, the how a car is clean to mcdonald's bag in the back it shows i observe everything i ask questions my vin game is strong before i even get to that point so when i when i when i vet strong and guess what 
I, my standards is a motherfucker. And then chicks be like, you know what? You arrogant, you asshole. You think you this and this and this and this. No, my vetting game's strong. So by time, if, if I didn't get through that vetting process and it's time to either go to a hotel or a house, if I'm taking her to a hotel, that means I didn't vet her properly. So, so the conversation was around, should you take a chick to an hotel uh, or take her to your house? Uh, a lot of this men on this panel basically... Uh, said they they can't take a woman to their house right and rightfully so he's pushing against them that hey listen my vetting game is strong uh i'm actually going to be vetting before anyone comes to my house but yes people can come to my house as long as i know them now the funny thing about this conversation is i hear a lot of men uh they're not talking about getting to know a woman they're not talking about the idea of a woman that you want to be with in a romantic way that at some point you will feel like you know them, like you've known them for a long time. They basically, they are capping. I think it's a good time to cap right now. <laughs> They're basically capping and basically saying, oh yeah, I'm just a robot. I'm going to meet a woman and this woman are dangerous and they never come into my house. Uh, one of them says he protects his space. Now, those things sound perfectly beautiful on the surface, right? But when you start to dig in deeper, dig in deeper, there's a lot of layers to it, right? If you're generalizing, right, and you're saying never, you're never bringing a woman to your house, right? Um, I would agree that you should do that if this is just a bunch of random women that you're meeting. I would agree 100%, right, that you should never bring this kind of uh, woman to your house, right, that you don't know, like, yeah. But then on the flip side of things, if you're meeting women from time to time, right, um, how much money exactly are you spending on booking hotels, right? And how often are you getting laid? Could that be one of the problems that we're having in this manosphere conversations? There you have it. So I wanted to to play some of those for you and not, uh, you know, not, not, I don't want to waste too much time on that. If I have some more time, I'll come back to it later, you know. But, um, Let's go ahead and uh, I want to play um, a video of Rolo Tomasi uh, basically calling Afiz out uh, to be full of shit, right? Afiz is one of the duos of the roommates, right? Uh, this is Afiz right here. Uh, he's one of the duos uh, on the podcast, a popular podcast called uh, Roommates. And I'm proud to say Afiz is a Nigerian like myself. Uh, Doe was raised here. I wasn't raised in the United States. I was only born here. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and play that video of him calling him full of shit. <laughs> like, uh, I do think a lot of people are full of shit in this space, but let's see why he thinks he's full of shit. Uh, let's find that video. Boom. All right. To me, it's just like, when you when it, it, with guys in that that far red pill space when you tell them they're you guys are hurt men yeah that's they it triggers them yeah because it may no it trigger if, if it trick if it triggers them it triggers them because you are having an emotionalist conversation with emotionalist goals and they are trying to have what the hell is an emotionalist conversation with emotionalist goals i understand the emotionalist goals part you're you're never gonna win that battle but emotionalist conversation does that really exist i'm not sure if that exists right now i i do want to come back to this video but let me play another clip for you really quickly of pat um pbd pat bet david uh the guy who owns value Tainment's channel a fantastic channel nonetheless um from his PBD podcast, right? Uh, interviewing Rolo. And I think this is going to do... Because, again, he contradicts himself quite a bit, right? But I get it. Because it's very hard to have this uh, this kind of conversation, right? Uh, let's see. Let's, let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Come on, where are you? I hope I'll find it. Uh... Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Pardon me here. Pardon me. Pardon me. Okay, there you go. I think I found it. All right. Yes. We are sold a philosophy 
by somebody who has had dramatic life experiences that we haven't had. Right. But they so this is what I call the WCC experience. People that are advising you from a place of WCC, worst case scenario, right? Um, it, it's you got to be careful with those kind of advices. Worst case scenario or generalized. That's why I don't spend too much time on statistics because statistics and data are recorded information. Basically, they lack real time, right? Uh, and human beings are always evolving. While it's useful to look at history, right? We can look at history and say, hey, um, this is what we can learn from history, right? But the idea of looking at history and projecting it on people and just predicting that everyone is going to behave like this or your future is going to be like this is problematic as long as you're a human being, right? They impose their philosophies onto you and you kind of sit there and say, I'm going to buy that, but you shouldn't buy that because it may not work for your life. It's extra, but because the other person is such a better salesperson, it's so much emotion into it, you buy into it, right? You got to be very careful which philosophies are people. So PBD, this guy right here, understands sales. He understands that sales, people make moves to buy 85% uh, based on our emotions and they justify with logic later. So he's saying, if somebody's advising you from a place of emotions, right? Like, can you really be advising people? You buy. So I remember when I interviewed her, Gloria Allred, we're in her office, I walk in, and, you know, she she's a perfect, like, she's the, for people that don't know who Gloria Allred is, how do you define who she is? She's a Michael uh, Jordan Tyler. of sexual harassment lawsuits, lawsuits right? Can yeah. we say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Attractive older. She's the Michael Jordan of sexual harassment lawsuits. That not that crazy? That is mad, right? <laughs> Woman, accomplished. By the way, I had the most incredible time sitting down with her when the interview was done, because things got heated. When the interview was done, I said, can I hug you? She says, you know what, Patrick? All you have to do is ask. That's the key. Yep. I'm like, okay. Uh -huh. So she gave me the biggest hug. Mm -hmm. We laughed it out. But I pushed her. She pushed me. I said, look, Gloria. So that's how like a woman who is always using every opportunity to talk about her talking points based off of her belief system and her traumatic experiences potentially. But let's keep listening. Let's see if she's had traumatic experience, right? You talk about feminism and women's rights and all this stuff. How many people you got working here? A lot. Why is it that the front desk clerk was a woman, but all your partner's pictures on the wall, they're all men? Well, well, well uh, are you, how about you, Patrick? Are you not a bigot? It was like such an interesting dynamic. Yeah. But then I said, I want to find out about that. So there's a tendency to always go in the direction of the sign language. Shame, insult, guilt, and uh, need to be right, right? There's a tendency. Now, the point I'm making here is that it, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. When you're speaking and you're speaking very passionately of something, uh, it's usually not because you've done scholarly studies of it. It's usually because you can relate one way or the other at a very personal level. Okay? This later. Lady, when I looked at her documentary, looked at study stuff uh, on her, when she was in Cancun, do you know the story about what happened to her in Cancun no. in Mexico? So when she was younger, in her uh, early uh, mid-20s, very attractive girl. She goes to a doctor, she meets a doctor. Doctor says, let's go back to my practice. I want to show you my office. In the office, she, he, she, he rapes her, okay? Mm -hmm. And she keeps it to herself for a while, but she creates this level of anger towards men, right? And naturally and rightfully so, because she's a human being, right? So she became a feminist, a radical feminist, lawsuits, I think this lady they're talking about is the publisher of Huntington Post. I'm not sure. So later on, she gets married uh, to this man. Then they get a divorce. I think after she gets a divorce, uh, you know, he ends up committing suicide. The guy kills himself, her first husband. And her second husband, she gets married. They get a divorce. She keeps the last name, but sues the hell out of him. Mm -hmm. And you saw what happened to her daughter. Her daughter is now kind of similar doing what she's doing. I don't know if you're following the foot. She's following her footsteps. Similar personality, strong personality. And she's out there saying, independent woman, independent woman, independent mm -hmm. woman, independent woman. And women are like, she's right, she's right, she's right. Mm -hmm. And it may work for some, but some actually do want to have a family, do want to have, oh, you yeah. know, do want to have a husband, do want to stay. Right, but people like that, they basically stop the whole world and say, hey, those people don't exist. This world is just terrible. You need to watch out for this, watch out for that, watch out for that, watch out for that. Now, if this was a business, right? If we're running a business, let me just make sure that uh, 
right? If this was a business, right, then obviously you should make sure that you uh, mitigate against risk and all this kind of stuff. But we're human beings. We're human beings. Uh, there is a point you get to, just like even in business, there's a point to that there's an overkill of trying to protect yourself and then you miss out on life and love. And that's the message that I'm driving home here, right? But again, he's still talking about people that tend to advise from a place of WCC, worst case scenario, and generalized data collection. They, you know, build something together with them. How do you differentiate between, you know, somebody who is selling a bag of goods that maybe worked for her because she had a painful experience? Mm -hmm. How do you process that? How do you get somebody who is listening to this saying, well, she's right, mm -hmm. versus saying, I don't know if that philosophy is going to work for me long term. It's, it's very difficult to make a rational argument with people who are like seated and steeped in emotionalism. So and that's him admitting to what he's basically accusing a phase of. So at that point, it's very hard. It's not just very hard. It's damn near impossible that you ask human beings to rationalize without their emotions being involved in it. There's a point you study so much data that it becomes a part of who you are and then you start to express that emotion just as much as anybody else or the next person. So at this point, let me go back to our fees, right? Let me go back to our fees. Empirical debate with you. They're trying to say, here are the numbers, Hafiz. Here's what's... So in spite of people saying this is an empirical argument, I have to look at your action. I'm even looking at the facial expression of Rolo right now, right? I'm looking at his facial expression right now, and his facial expression is telling me that it's not all the way rational. I could be wrong, but I'm just saying there's emotional expression on his face. And if, I, if he's talking to me, I'm going to be interacting with him based on the emotional expression I'm seeing on his face. And that dilutes whatever level of empirical uh, uh, argument is trying to create by default. So if you don't increase your level of intellectual abilities, intellectual quotient, all the way up to emotional quotient, EQ, this is where you start to miss it. This is where a lot of Rolo Tomasi red pill argument will miss it. What's going on in the real fucking world? How do you parse that out? Tell me. I, 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 would, I would like to know, how do you parse the, that data out with your belief set? Because you're having this argument. The data, again, is recorded data. We're talking about real time right now. He's having a conversation like a normal human being with a young lady, right? And he's speaking his insights. Insights is a function of data. It's a function of how I feel right now right oh yeah you don't like the idea of feeling but that's the reality of what you call a human being right as a matter of fact nobody gives a shit about anything else outside of what they feel with the goal you. of is this right is this wrong does it feel good does it not feel good uh how is what's positive about that where's the positivity where's the love in all of this right that's the goal and I'm not saying that that's not even necessarily a bad goal, but when we're talking past each other, it's because my goal is to show you the data and show you the empirical material obs observable fact. The title of this video on YouTube is that this is why our fees is full of shit, something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing, right? And um, if our fees sees that, are you going to tell me that you have expectations that he won't necessarily be a little bit upset or feel some type of way? Maybe not upset, maybe feel some type of way. Are you saying that you have expectations that he should just see it as a, just a thumbnail, right? See, again, the unrealistic expectation is at all time high. And you have people who claim to be rational males discounting the fact that human beings will always feel some type of way at any point, a given time, including themselves. That's all I'm saying, okay? Acts here and say, well, what do you think of it? Is this true or is this not true? It doesn't matter because you're not focused on whether it's true or it's not. You're focused on whether it feels good or it doesn't. Or I'm a bad person or I'm a good person. That's the that's what you're trying to, that's the end state of whatever your debate is all about. I made this, or I read this on last Sunday's show. But again, it's all in emotions. They, they presume that, our, that all, every human being's priority 
should be based on this emo emotional, uh, are you hurt? No, no, you assume that human beings have the ability to, that their conversations, including yourself, will somehow not involve emotions. That's unrealistic expectations. It's a fallacy. It doesn't exist. And this is why instead of solving any problems in these spaces, uh, you end up creating more problems. Uh, a lot of the minions that are following you, while they may have had experiences that is worth being uh, empath uh, having empathy about, right? empathizing about, right, uh, will end up not solving these problems because the emotional, the, em the emotion about the statistics, the, watch what I just said, the emotional about the statistics and the data that you bring to the table, as much as they're trying to remove themselves from the blue pill mentality into the red pill, they become emotional about the red pill. They turn the red pill into a religion. Guess what that is? Emotions. So you're not helping anyone heal, essentially. Okay. Now, he's never claimed that he's trying to help anyone heal. He claims that he's giving them the tools. Right? It's, he claims that he's giving them the tools. Right? So in recent times, I've noticed that this guy is attacking everyone. Uh, and the idea that he's attacking everyone uh, helps, like, makes me question, like, is he actually a rational male? Well, I'm not questioning. He's not a rational male. No one is a 100% rational male. No one is ever going to be that. It's an ideology. It's going to remain in a book. It makes sense inside of the book, and it stays inside of the book. And that's the reality, right? And that's the true red pill. If you want to define a red pill properly, because it's supposed to be the truth and nothing else and nothing more, nothing less, right? So he's been attacking people. One of the people he's attacked in recent times is uh, um, Jordan Peterson, right? This guy right here. So now Jordan Peterson is some, somebody I'm still following. There's a video of him going viral attacking the manosphere and the red pill community in recent times and i want to play that video right about now and then i will come back to uh the videos of rollo uh if i have it i'm not sure if i have it of rollo attacking uh him let's see uh rollo tomasi all right let's see uh okay yeah i have that video right here okay all right, so he, he did not directly attack him, but attacking a lot of his points. But again, um, you know, I'm not sure if, uh, you know, because rightfully so, you know, Rolo has claimed that Jordan Peterson is um, is blue pilled because of this kind of videos. Let, let's let's watch this video right here. <laughs> oh, interesting. Let's see. All right, great. That's not your problem. Your problem is mm. why you can't find the woman you want. Yeah. And you, you have to assume that's your problem because otherwise you have to assume that it's the women's problem. And yeah. really, they're all wrong and you're right. Really? Hmm, lucky you. Maybe you are. You're an undiscovered gem of some sort. What's going on, Sahil? Probably not. <laughs> all right, so let me play the second video. Um, Let's see the second video. Uh, let's see. All right. So this is a little longer video of uh, Jordan Peterson addressing uh, young men in the red pill manosphere and, space. You know, as a class of creature, there's something wrong with you because they're right. You're wrong. They're right to not pick you. If they're not picking you, it's because they're right. Wow. Now. That might get, I know that's a terrible thing to say, and I know perfectly well. Oh, wait, at least it's acknowledging that that's a terrible thing to say. Listen, we're a fan of telling the truth and not pulling back. Let's just tell the truth as it is, right? And I feel like uh, we're big boys. We can handle that, right? But this is the reality that a lot of people need to face right now. If a bunch of people are saying something is off, then you have to kind of pay attention to that. Maybe not receive it as the absolute truth, but maybe pay attention to, hmm, why are they saying that? There's something about how they're saying that as opposed to approaching it from a standpoint, no, they're wrong and I'm right, <laughs> right? As I always say, it's not really about right and wrong. This conversation is not about right and wrong. If you think it's right, you're right. If you think it's wrong, you're wrong. 
Oh, sorry, you're right, <laughs> right? You're always right. But the conversation is a little bit deeper than that. It wasn't like I was particularly successful with girls when I was young. You know, so I know what that rejection is like. I know what that fear is like. I don't know it as well as some men know it because I wasn't rejected outright. Um, so, but, but what, what you have to understand is that what do you expect from women? If you got pregnant because you had sex, you'd be pretty damn choosy too. So, <laughs> so at this point, we can call him a simp because he's basically uh, trying to understand why a woman feels the way they feel. This is what we tend to do. I don't think it's a simp. I think, if anything, uh, it takes strength to go to that level of uh, understanding where you're putting yourself in another person's shoes, right? I think it goes. So I want to share this video of, uh, of Rolo talking about uh, Jordan. Again, we're talking about Rolo Tomasi and his uh, seeming, seemingly attack on other men in, in this space of talking to men and stuff like that, right? So let me play this video. Human, sex is still going to be around long after humans have gone extinct. Like sex is universal. It's, it's what drives every single species. But we, I'm just surprised at how often we overlook it as, as an incentive for behavior and mm -hmm. how fast things are changing in the realm of sex. I just saw this uh, statistic uh, from the Washington Post showing that from 2008 to 2018, the number of sex, uh, the amount of sexlessness among men under the age of 30 has doubled. So in 2008, 15% of men under age 30 reported not having sex in the past year. And by 2018, it had doubled to about 30%. And for women, it had, it, it, it increased slightly. It was something like 10% in 2008 to like 15% in 2018. So there was a, an increase, a slight increase, but for men, it has doubled to the point where- Wait, 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 wait. So it, it looks to me like Rolo is getting excited about this statistics. Excitement is an emotion, <laughs> okay? When something hits a nerve, <laughs> that's an emotion, right? Again, I'm digging in through your actions all the way, your actions, your actions, your actions, your actions. It's not what you say, it's about how you act, okay? This is him reacting to a video of this young man having a conversation with Jordan Peterson, right? Again, I'm talking about the people that are discounting emotions as a big part of life. Um, as opposed to accepting it for what it is, which is what the red pill is supposed to be. We see it as what it is, we accept it, and then we learn how to navigate. Instead of discounting reality, right? Or calling anything emotional, not reality. When it's precisely exactly that, especially in real time, right? We discount it in exchange for recorded data, right? Let's keep going. About one in three young men are reporting that they haven't had sex in the past year, which is a very new thing. Um, just watch his animation. Despite the mating apps. Right, but despite the apps, despite um, even more uh, support, supposedly for um, sexual freedom and for polyamory. So so we know, we, we know the stat. The stat is exactly what it is. Like a lot of men, uh, I think the number in recent times is that 30% of men under the age of, 30% uh, uh, under 30, I think up to 30, are virgins, right? They, they, they experience sexlessness, right? Not only that, we also know that 15%, 15 to 20% of marriages are experiencing sexlessness, right? So there's a lot of problem going on there. And we notice that the more we discount the effect of emotions and we discount the idea of rom romantic relationship, the romance part of it, right? It just gets worse. Uh, you ever find yourself in a situation where a woman doesn't want to sleep with you and say, why don't you want to sleep with me? And then she actually, just by saying that, it makes it worse, right? Uh, yeah, we don't want to talk about that. We just want to talk about the part that we feel, still feelings, that she doesn't want to have sex because she's punishing us with the sex, right? See, that's the easy route to go, right? But if somebody wants to have sex with you and they're punishing you with it, that would also mean they're punishing themselves. Now, why would somebody not be crazy, right? If somebody who is not crazy, why would they want to punish themselves from something they want? Uh, we don't get to that part of the conversation usually, right? And novel relationship arrangements and right. the further sort of devaluing of, of the importance of sex. Um, Rolo, look at his face. Look at his facial expression. He's more excited about the stats 
and talking about the problems than coming up with solutions, right? He never talks about solutions. In fact, he has admitted, I have some clips here, he's admitted to the idea that, hey, you know, um, you know, I, I, I don't help people transform, I give them the tools to transform. That's, uh, that's something that a guru will say, right? You don't help people transform, but you give them the tools to transform. Uh, yeah, we all do that. Anyone can give tools or what they call tools. But at some point, if you're building a nation of followership, a massive followership of people that are bonding on the problems, you, I will hope you give them some kind of solution, right? And that's, that's what I'm saying here. A lot of people... Uh, will say that book has changed their lives because um, it helps them see the, the true nature of human beings. They usually say the true nature of women, but actually his book did a great job at talking about the true nature of both men and women, right? It, his book did a great job at doing that, right? And the, it, like I said earlier, the goodness of that book stays in that book. Application of that book is another entire, it's entirely a different topic altogether. Just like application of a lot of the rhetorics that a lot of the gurus in those spaces, uh, application is lacking much, right? Application skills. Let's keep going. More people are having less of it, men and women, but especially young men. Yeah, you know, well, my understanding is that's damn near epidemic in Japan. Mm. Hmm. Okay. So there's What's happening? an epidemic here. A tremendous number of young men in Japan are falling into that category. And in, in, in fact, this society has become increasingly so sexless. I, I, I want to know, people. right? I want to know what is causing this, right? We need to go, instead of talking about the actual problem, the, the one that we see, the symptom, right? We got to go to the, we have to go to the, we have to do a deep root cause analysis. We have to understand why. And by the time I completed this video, there was no talk about why. Granted, it's a short video, right? There was no talk about why it's happening so we can help more people solve the problem. We just get excited about talking about the problems and the symptoms, right? That's what you will find a lot in those spaces. I mean, that's reflected to some degree in the declining birth rate. But now, oh, right. it's been a yeah. long time since I look, looked at the statistics, but that's my understanding. And so if it happened there, it's not surprising that it you know, might happen here. And that might be mm -hmm. a consequence too of this emergent polygamy that we were describing is that all this. No, Jordan, it is happening here. In fact, the stats that Rob's quoting are exactly the same stats that I quoted. I like, I think it was last two weeks ago. Uh, no, no, last Wednesday, actually a week ago. Um, when I was talking about male virginity and I was using those stats and I actually, there's a whole lot more that go along with that. I don't want to dig those out, go back to that show and you can, you can have a look at those, but uh, it's here and it's been here. We've understood this since, well, I mean, with the, they did the research from 2008 to 2018. So I've known about this stuff for hmm, almost well two and a half years at, at the very least. We know this. In fact, it was, it was big headlines in the black pill doomer committee communities. Oh, look, uh, we're, we're doomed. Uh. But what these guys don't, what, what Jordan really doesn't. He, he so so I, what are we crying about? I, I hate to say it that way, but what are we complaining about? Maybe it's a better way to say it, right? Are we complaining that um, there, again, what is the deep, what is the root cause? And what is the cause of this? What is the deeper cause of this, right? As opposed to pointing fingers at the women. Is it because women are not giving us sex? Or could it be something else entirely, right? If women are just meant to give us sex as men, right? And just give it to us as a duty, right? Um, what will be the value in it for a woman, right? Do we even get to that point of asking that question? Why would she want to do that outside of a 1970, 1960 reason? Like back then, it was basically, it was okay to make it a duty because the woman needed us to survive, right? But in this time and age, uh, clearly something is different somewhere. I, again, I'm still asking, what is the cost? Why is it that men up to 30, right, are virgins up to the age of 30? Sorry, 30% 30 of them. One out of every three, right? Okay, so yes, it's not just in Japan. There's an epidemic in Japan, they said. But here is an epidemic here right now as well. What is the real reason? Those are the questions that we still need to answer. We know what the problems are, right? So let's go to, boom, boom, boom. 
let's go to again he's been attacking quite a few people but uh, they, they, I'll come back to Rolo if I have time there's a young lady here that I feel like we should definitely make sure we cover her name is uh, Jen uh, from Jen on the block um, so she she ended up in the manosphere because uh, she was on a, what you call it, the lead attorney show. Uh, lead attorney, uh, let's see here. What's going on, John? What's going on, John, my brother? Nwabu for Ude Mezue. What's going on? I already talked about Kemi Aditiba. We talked about the fact that she got proposed to at the wall. Um, you know. Uh, or beyond the wall, uh, age beyond 30 years of age, and we talked about uh, we talked about that already. So maybe you may want to talk about that uh, or come back and watch that watch this video once we, we're done. But you're going to be entertained with what we're about to talk about right now. Uh, on the block with Jen, <laughs> yes, the wall, right? I know some of us get excited about that, right? So. Um, Let's talk about uh, the the on the block with Jan. There's a few video clips that I want to play here, and the funny thing about this stream, this stream was about I don't know about five hours or so. I like uh, on the block with Jan because it's a it's a push against the manosphere. The manosphere, for the most part, is a lot of uh, it's a lot of uh, um, echo chamber. People, everyone repeating the same talking point. You know, everybody repeats the talking. People lack any level of creativity when they're talking about um, some of the issues that they have with men, uh, sorry, with women, or with uh, the zones that we're in right now as uh, the dating scenes right now. I'm not in the dating scene right now, but I'm paying attention to the conversations. I haven't been in the dating scene actively. I was maybe shortly in, in some few years back, but, uh, but actively for the past 15 years, I haven't been in the dating scene, you know? Thank you very much, John. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Help me share, like, and subscribe. So we got this video, and this is basically, it, the rule is very simple. I'm going to say the rule right now, then I'll say it multiple times as we continue to play these clips, right? The rule is simple. A man that knows a woman does not argue with a woman. I don't care what context. I don't care if you want to call it a debate. I don't care if you want to say, oh, it's okay, it's not that deep, it's social media. Listen, you, you don't argue with a woman, okay? It's as simple as that. Now, you can do whatever you want as an adult, of course, right? Of course. But you're going to attract what you attract. And this is going to be consistent a lot of, uh, almost 100% of the time, it's going to be consistent. Now, there will be women that will say, oh, that's not necessarily true because they're trying to rationalize things because we ask them to rationalize, right? But that's always going to fall <laughs> off that pedestal because that's not the nature of human beings in general, right? This is going to happen 100% of the time. Hey! Quit! Hey! Quit! Hey! Quit! Yo! Help me, nigga! Help me! Fuck wrong with you, nigga! Come on! Where my glasses? Get off of me, bro. Drop your goofy ass again. Get off of me. Now beat that. Bitch ass, nigga. Pay for this shit. Yo. Hurry up. No, come Pay for on. that shit and hurry up, Fart. Drop Yo. your ass again. Touch me, get on the drop. Stop video for they help me. me. She got my key. Come on, help you. No, come help on. Right, so she did a show on the, I think she said the Soto something of, of, of the Manosphere, basically breaking down the different parts of the Manosphere. Uh, she talked about the, the pickup artist, the PUA. She talked about the MRA, the men's rights activist, activism. She talked about the incels, the uh, involuntary celibates. Uh, she talked about the other one. She talked about it's another fourth one. I forgot right now. But I'm not too concerned about those things. I'm much more concerned about uh, the behavior that you should look out for that will continue to attract this kind of reaction from women. Uh, intentions are overrated, okay? Uh, you mean well. You went there to, 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 I don't know, to, you went there to explain more of what the manosphere is about. Good intentions. I get it, right? But nonetheless, <laughs> this is what's going to happen 100% of the time. So let me play the first video. The first video um, is um, our concerns is not to be desirable. This is basically a man <laughs> arguing with women 
why our concerns is not to be desirable. But let's see how that flies, right? Because what you were saying earlier is that a lot of these men are not desirable. And this is something that I want to say. They're not. Well, as, as men, our concern is not to be desirable. Well, as our men concern. That, that might be your concerns as women. I don't know what your concerns are because I'm not one. Right, our concerns I mean, are too big. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. I'll let you go. Now, even me as a man, this gentleman we have to prove to me that he's not already triggered. I mean, just hear the tone, right? We're human beings, okay? Oh yeah, he has empirical data, like Rolo Tomasi said, right? He has the facts, he's just about to spit the facts. But again, as a human being, even if you were on the receiving end of this as a man, right? Wouldn't you like, well, why are you yelling, <laughs> right? Okay, sometimes people are yelling on the internet and they don't realize it, but what about the tonality, right? Oh, no, don't ask me to speak the tonality. But again, you're right. You have the right to speak how you want to speak. However, the people that respond have the right to respond how they're going to respond. And you're going to create certain types of results from that. Let's watch the results it's creating. I'm just saying, uh, as, as men, to be better men, our concern should be to be better men. To bring knowledge, wisdom, understanding, structure, order to our own lives first. And that way... We can spread that throughout the community. If our only concerns are to be desirable to women, we've already lost the battle and war as men. So those, those, those channels that sit there and talk about women all day, whether it's derogatory or they're the pickup artist or whatever, that's not conducive to manhood. All right. So he has a point. But again, he's over here arguing with women. This is about arguing with women, right? So let me play the next clip for you. And then it's just gonna be it's gonna be a little bit more interesting, right? By the way, go follow her and and, and, and subscribe to her channel. Uh, it's a healthy pushback, okay? Uh, there's no absolutes in life. You gotta be careful when you put yourself in an echo chamber where everything is about absolutes, okay? You gotta be careful. It put you it puts a massive blind spot behind you. And you just don't see things when it's coming. You will lack game. You will uh, have reducing, like actively reducing social skills over time because that's an evolving thing too. Because human beings are always evolving, right? You can't be her. You're a black woman and you think you can be a hypergamous? Like, what? I don't think so. Where? And what I don't planet? Think so. How do we even have the opportunity to be hypergamous? I don't, what, not if you are a black ridiculous. woman. So when you're arguing with women, what you're, you're going to hear a lot of sarcasm. You're going to hear a lot of condescension because these are natural things to do, especially for women when they feel like you, when they feel attacked, even if your intentions are not an attack, right? They're over here. They're talking about manosphere. For me, my first cue is that I'm not going on that stage. I don't care. Unless I was particularly invited to come and speak on manosphere being a topic that I understand understand by the way i still don't understand it right <laughs> but let's say i they she deemed me uh, as a person that understand the manosphere and she wanted to interview me and she invites me on by the very nature of the fact that she invited me she will uh, probably accord me the same level of respect and let me answer the way i want to answer with a certain level of respect but we have men that go on this stage to actively because of they're trying to do the right thing or they try they have the right intentions right and they think they're not going to get the pushback <laughs> you cannot be hypergamous how dare you think you can be black woman and hypergamous that's for karen so that's a young lady called Annalisa. i actually uh i met her maybe one time on clubhouse and this is her tone 100% of the time when she's engaged people on the internet. She as well will have to prove to me that she's not, that this thing is not touching nerves in real life. Okay? It doesn't mean it is. I'm just saying she will have to prove to me. It's the same thing across board, either way, men or women. If you're engaging this conversation, why is it that I stay out of people's backstages? And uh, I, I, I've done it a few times, but for the most part, I stay out of it. And I don't have any plan to go back to people's backstages to, uh, you know, uh, it depends. It really depends. It depends on the, on on how I read the room. I still need to read the room for the most part. There are a few people I may go on their stage, people like Courtney, people like Sir Hill, um, you know, a few people.
right? Very few. Um, a few more people. I'm trying to think, right? But in, generally, when it's an echo chamber and I have an idea that they already made up their mind, I don't see the point, right? Like, like I don't engage people that don't want to be engaged. And that's why I respect Annalisa because, Annalisa, because once you engage her, um, yeah, she's going to bring you that energy 100% of the time. With that being said, my job is to also point it out that uh, it sounds like she, you know, there's a lot of this topic is hitting certain nerves, right? Uh, she claims, I think she says she's a, a psychoanalysis kind of professional. I'm not sure. That is for Karen so and Ming Ming and Maria only. You, <laughs> you ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am. <laughs> you are going to stay with Pookie. You, I don't care if you, I don't care if you have your education. I don't care if you have your education, ma'am. We don't value education. So, so D. Durrell is back. I didn't. Uh you're, you're going to have to prove to me, right? You're going to have to prove to me that raising your voice, you got to have to prove to me, right? And there's a good chance I already made up my mind. If you raise your voice, if you feel the need to raise your voice, men or women, there, there are emotions involved. It, the emotions doesn't have to be negative, by the way, but there are emotions involved. So a lot of patience, a lot of wisdom is re required when, you're in, when you involve in conversations where people tend to raise their voice. Things like religion, politics, sexism, all the isms, racisms, right? You cannot say, hey, I'm bringing facts and you're bringing emotionalism. That's a fallacy. It makes no sense whatsoever. I didn't invite you back, sir. What I said was... All right. Let me go on to the next, uh, last, last one here. All right. When a man finds himself in a space that he has to ask, can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? Well, it could be romantic relationship. It could be just a conversation. If you have to say, can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? there's a good chance that you're not going to get a chance to finish. There's a good chance that emotions are already being plugged into the situation above normal because there's always emotions, right? And there's a good chance that you're losing your own cool. There's a good chance that you're, own, you're caught up in your feelings because can I finish comes from a place that you feel like they're not allowing you to finish. And even though you may be right, as always, you could be right, right? You could be right, trust me, right? Even though you may be right, yeah, uh, it's not going to work. Okay, let's watch this. Can I finish? When I'm in the manosphere, I'm debating and producing accurate arguments against the things that they're saying and telling them some of the very things that you're stating right now. So I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not thinking just about like, I'm not thinking about it. What is the accurate argument? What is that? I thought you're making an argument from a place of your own understanding, which can be flawed which has its own limitations, right? What is the meaning of I'm providing my own argument? You can provide your own insight. They're accurately your own insights. They're accurate your own, accurately your own version of truth based off of a function of where you're coming from in life. All those different things, right? Like you okay, are- okay. Can you hear me? I, I'm not I don't thinking, think she's saying, I'm, why are you supporting you, I'm just, one, I'm more so wondering, like, do you understand I, why- I, Yes, I do. I, I was trying to finish the answer. Like, I mean, I, I didn't say anything. I, I was, Darryl, so he referenced back the fact that he was, tr he was saying, can I finish, right? These are men that, are, that tend to be in a square. They want to keep everything in a straight line. You're having a conversation with a typical woman. She is not capable of keeping a conversation in a straight line like that, okay? more likely you're not capable of doing that because obviously if you understood that you will let it fly right and then you, there's a way there are skill sets involved in bringing the conversation back to way without referencing in a condescending manner without referencing can i finish in a condescending manner i understand what you're saying okay but so let me can, can spoken, i can i finish you, you spoken several times and you no i did not i don't i didn't say anything Oh, yeah, I was on the live stream. He did speak several times, right? Again, by the way, I am picking apart every word. Just if you're wondering, why am I picking apart the words? I'm picking apart everything, okay? You have every time. Wanna, can I say something? I, I, wait we a have, minute. Have, <laughs> I, so I listened to a loaded question and I can't even minute, answer. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have he, he doesn't, you don't support the manosphere. Is that what it is? When you're there, you're constantly debating. Basically, what they're trying to say is that the way you're answering the question is 
they can relate they you're not landing you're not landing the points it's not making sense it's not correlating with how they feel never mind what they said right it's not correlating with how they feel and for as long as you continue to do that yes you will be interrupted dating them that's what you heard saying, that part already but oh yeah and by the way you could be saying the right thing by the way yes but we had haran come up here and we had a great dialogue and we we everybody waited it was popcorn style we asked questions and he answered but i listened to you speak and, and and i listened to I a loaded question to i just wanted to finish my answer so shut up so he keeps talking about he wants to finish he needs to finish is basically a camouflage and need to be right. Just ask to not be interrupted. I didn't interrupt anybody. Thank you guys. It's not Ms. called Jen, interrupting. Did I interrupt it's called anybody. a conversation. Oh, no, but let him I, I'm trying to have a conversation, but soon I, I listened to three. No, he's trying to create an echo chamber. He's trying to be right. People ask a question. Okay. okay and then when I was ahead, within the ahead, third Darryl. sentence, I got interrupted. So. I'm asking you all, let me finish. So, so if you engage a conversation this way, even though you're right, when a woman starts to say, well, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Why are you bitching? Why are you surprised that they're doing that, right? And, and that's the part that fascinates me the most. Eventually, these women are going to say, why are you crying? Why are you bitching? And then you act like you're surprised. Or why are they acting that way? Although you call them, or you call them masculine, right? What about the part that you brought the feminine energy to that space and that attracted the masculine? Speaking, I'm not here to argue with anybody. And I just, and I've stated for several times, I don't agree with none of the stuff that they say. I'm a person that does not agree with the things and you argue with me as if I'm a fantasist. It doesn't matter that you say you don't agree with the manosphere. What he's alluding to is he said earlier that he doesn't agree with the manosphere. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, the don't doesn't matter. What they're hearing is that you agree with the manosphere, especially you came here and you were spewing some rhetoric that's almost sounded like you're repeating the words they're saying or you're defending them. When people are attacking another person and you come into their space to defend whatever they're attacking, you should expect that they will push back against you. And if you don't expect that, it tells me a lot about your social skills. A uh, supporter. I'm not arguing with you. It's a no. Question. You asked me. A, okay. <laughs> By the way, this is a guy who claims to be, and I he's probably one, right? He claims to be a clinical psychologist, right? There are many of them like that that completely lack social skill. They understand the topic from a very theoretical standpoint, but when it comes to application, it's lacking. I'm okay. Go ahead. Question. Just I'm gonna just listen to you speak, and I'm not gonna say anything. Go. Okay. Okay. So now he's mad. <laughs> So now he's angry, he gave up, right? Still not going to attract the respect that he's craving. He's craving respect from these ladies. And he would disagree, by the way. I expect him to disagree, but I'm looking at the actions. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like you, Because you every time I speak, I'm interrupted. No, Look at that. I thought it was done. Again, lack of consistency. In little micro places, you lack consistency. You said you were done. But you couldn't be done because she triggered you again. Oh, is she deliberately triggering you? Yes, she could be. But a lot of times in real life, she will shit test you and not necessarily deliberately. There's a threshold. With people okay, like him, okay. there's a threshold. There, there's a ceiling. There's a threshold for you to there's not talk when everybody's speaking. No, I had a great conversation. You, you want to you you wanna control the mic. Time. I wasn't even speaking to you. I was speaking to the lady in the middle, Look, but you, you find the point yourself to say something. I wasn't even speaking to you. We don't have to all talk at the same time. Wana, Anna, did you have an... So another version of can I finish is can I speak? I'm going to play another one for you. And this one is can I speak? If you find yourself in a space where you're speaking at the top of your lungs and the veins on your neck are popping out and you say, can I speak, can I speak, can I speak? There's a good chance that you've lost respect in that conversation. The best, best thing to do, the best thing to do is to exit, is to bow out honorably because you already lost it, right? And you're only going to trigger yourself even further, okay? Let's keep going. So every time I speak, I know you just don't want me to say nothing. I'll just not say nothing on the panel because every time I say something, some. 
I'll just not say nothing on the panel. We've all been there. We've all been there. Let's not act like we're holy here, right? You've been all been there with a the woman, maybe the woman in your life, right? Well, I'll just not say anything. Well, you're being sarcastic. You're being condescending. That's only going to attract more disrespect. The only best thing to do is shut the hell up, back off for a second. It could be just a second, right? And actively listen to it. That's only, by the way, this is only we're talking about your wife, somebody you care about. If it's like complete stranger, like you're on a panel or something like that, I would just, uh, listen, it's going to take a lot of strength because, again, that need to be right is a real thing, right? You want to speak your own piece, right? They shut you down. That may even make it worse, right? And you start to feel your heart is pumping faster. You may say it's not that deep, but your voice is saying, you, you have to tell your voice that, right? You have to tell your face that it's not that deep. Your face is telling me it's that deep for you, right? And it's going to take a lot of strength to back off of a conversation that you're already emotionally engaged in, even though that wasn't your intentions, right? Somebody has a problem. Listen, you're talking um, when you, you shouldn't be. For, for, I, I, every time I say something, somebody every has a problem. Every time you talk, you shouldn't talk. You I said, can't say a word. You started the statement and said, <laughs> no, I, did. I don't know who you talking I'm about. I'm muted. I wasn't I talking know. about girl, you. Girl, who are you talking to, girl? I don't know if you're talking to yeah, me, girl. I don't know girl. who you're talking about. I was not talking to you. I was talking to the gentleman over to the left, right. I don't know. I don't know where it is. So that's what women would do. Now they will claim they're not talking to you. Now, the men were invited to the stage, right? Now, it's your responsibility to read the room and say, is this kind of room that I want to be in? For me personally, if I let me say, you could call this statistic, you call it anything you want to call it, right? If I know that I'm not going to have the room to talk, you know, at the level of vibrations that I like to talk in, I'm not going on the panel. It's really, really simple, right? You can call it punking out, you can call it, uh, you know, you could call it whatever you want to call it, right? But for me, it's about retaining my power, retaining my strength, and not engaging my weaknesses. Okay? Because I do have weakness, like everyone, like yourself, right? But obviously, a lot of these men don't understand that. And am I trying to fix them? No, absolutely not. We will continue to see this kind of example so we can continue to learn the lessons we need to learn on this platform. I'm like lost on this for five hours, okay? Police! Police! <laughs> Listen, no, don't all I'm just saying is that you're that's that's not completely accurate that men don't want to be desirable and that's that that is why a lot of those men go to those spaces and so you can't say that that's my whole entire point no I agree that that's why a lot of men go to those spaces right. and that needs to change and part of building now yourself up is desirability is it not the more you um, build yourself up the more desirable. no you are. building yourself up creates desirability right you, you can't so again Again, you're engaged in semantics, okay? Semantics-driven argument with women. It tells me that you don't understand women, okay? All right? It tells me that you don't understand women. It tells me that you don't even understand yourself. Because if you understood yourself, you understand that you will get out of your own frame when you find yourself in certain spaces. But, you know, maybe you just enjoy it. Maybe I could be wrong, right? Yes, of course. But if you're if your only you goal is to them. be desired, you, you just become a mark. Them, though, sir. You're like you just become a mark. That's the point. Like you that. That's it. The the goal. If the goal is not to be desirable, if the goal is not to seek validation from women, the need to argue will be instantly eliminated. Even let, let's bring it down to this argument by itself, right? The idea that you're engaged in this argument tells me that you need validation. And validation can be interwoven together with desirability. And that's one of the problems you see in the spaces. Okay? I understand there's a difference there, right? But there's some correlations there as well. All right? You can't separate yeah. desirability and the manuscript. Because you if, if, you have, if you have knowledge, you have wisdom, you have rationale, you have structure, you have order. Oh, yeah, yeah, the rationale. Everyone is very quick to run to the rationale. But she's talking. She was talking. She didn't land yet. But you interjected. Or you find yourself in a space where you feel like she's talking too much and you need to interject. Is that really rational? I don't think so. I don't think so. You have leadership capabilities. You have physical fitness, health. You have all of those things. You find yourself in a conversation where you and a woman, you're over talking each other. Is that really rational? Hmm. I'll let you decide. <laughs> that a man is supposed Anna, to have, Anna, you become desirable naturally. From 
from your father? Yep. Doesn't your father teach you how to be a man? Definitely. So is, is the man of spear a surrogate Absolutely, father? as do your experiences in life. Father. This is. So now you've attracted a woman using sign language to engage you. She said, doesn't your father supposed to be the whatever, right? Now she's asking those questions, right? And you may receive that as sign language. Now you get triggered even more. Uh, who's at fault with that? Uh, nobody put a gun into your head to come to that space, right? Yeah, One of the my, reasons. My father didn't teach me how to be a woman. Look, don't worry about my father. And I think you, the she not gonna let you speak, father. brother. You can yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that's what she does, very, but it's, 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 it's not funny. Father. Father. I do, I do. Have to be fair, that's what Analicia does. But again, I have to look at you, the man that put yourself in that space, because she did not invite you at least not directly right if anything it was a bait and it takes a man with a with a tremendous amount of strength to be able to handle this kind of conversation and we did have an example unfortunately i don't have that clip we did have an example a guy that actually commanded respect when it was talking to him. but it was highly risky because again uh you don't want to swim against the trend ever you want to make sure that the environment is conducive for whatever submission you're trying to make. And when people are already caught up in their feelings and emotions, you're not going to be the one to prove them right or wrong. They, they believe what they believe, right? I have to leave, but I, I wanted to say that before I leave. I mean, I, I don't really get your point. I just think that desirability is a factor in it. And I know maybe not for you, <laughs> but it's you. Yeah. Like, he doesn't so want women. Men that, that's, that's what they're well, I love women. For. Well, they I don't, don't love you. Also, now you have women telling you you don't want women. Right now, watch what she said. Annalisa's mouth is like a lethal weapon. Right? Watch what she not said. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what I'm saying I beg is that you yourself may not be looking for that, but that is definitely what most of them. I no, mean, that, that's that's what they are, and that's why they're right. not getting it because that's. Definitely. So is, is the man of spear a surrogate Absolutely, father? as do your experiences in life. Father. This is one yeah, of the my, reasons. My father didn't teach me how to be a woman. Look, Don't worry about my father. And but he, I think you, the man of spear is a surrogate speak, father. You can yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with what she does, but it's, it's, it's just not funny. Man. I do, I do have to leave, but I, I wanted to say that before I leave. I mean, I, I don't really get your point. I just think the desirability. Listen to the next sign language very closely. From Annalisa, listen to it. Uh, the other young lady that's yelling at the top of her lungs, listen to it very closely, right? Is a factor in it, and I know maybe not for you, <laughs> but it's you. Yeah, like he doesn't so want women. Men, that, that's, that's what. what I... Did you hear that? She said he doesn't want women. Oh, I love women. Well, they I don't, don't love you. What? I... And he said I love women. Listen, if you have to say I love women and we can't see it, maybe you find yourself in the wrong space. <laughs> okay, but guess what she said? She said women don't love you. Yeah, I don't know. You're going to have to prove that. Oh, you're married. Oh, again, there are a lot of married men that find themselves in this space. I've spoken to a lot of them. A lot of them are having trouble with their marriage. Okay. A lot of them are in sexless marriages. There's a lot of resentments to women. Some of them uh, didn't get over the resentments from high school. Uh, these things just don't come out of the skies. This, we're human beings. We're, we only spend our time on things we value. Okay. That's a fact of life. I'm saying <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what I'm saying is that you yourself you may not be looking for that, but that is definitely what most of them. I no, mean, that, I that's, that's what they are, and that's why they're right. not getting it, because that's their premise. Saying, right, but you came on kind of saying that that's not what they should, that they're, what they're doing, and that is what they're doing. I understand <laughs> that you don't think they should be doing that, but that's what they're on there to do is all I, that's my entire point. And then, you know, y'all want to jump in and say, like, it's nothing to argue. It's done. It's over. That's, that's, that's it. Go read about the Man of Spear before you try I've to already like, done the go research. read the book. You may no. know what it was. We may understand what it is. Right, right. I, I don't but... need to understand what it is. I don't care what you <laughs> think. I, I mean, you guys are doing a stream about what it is. You guys are doing a stream about what it is, not what it was. My first debate. I just want black women not to support it. My first debate in the Man of Spear was about the Man of Spear. Can you mute them for a second? They're derailing. Can everybody talk at the same time? Let's do it. No, they're derailing. Actually let's do a let's do a real super chat break. Thank you, Freezy, for the super chat. He says, no matter what, Freezy. these conversations are needed, but respectfully. Jen, Freezy, really? Freezy talking about <laughs> like Freezy talking about respectfully. Let me let I me say something. You, Freezy, Hold on. Jen, I want I want okay. to because now I, we've come full circle. In the beginning, we had Jabari come up here and say, 
why are you focusing on what it is now? Let's talk about what it used to be. And now you have this gentleman talking about, we don't care about what it was. We're talking about what it is now. And so, what it will I mean, be. You See, can't make this the reason why up. I came up here you is because this up. actually, believe it or not, this panel turned into a, a Manosphere panel which is what me and D. Durrell have been complaining about and what we've been trying well, to correct for a while. Well, it's turned into what complaint. women want instead of what men are supposed to. So this guy still doesn't understand that it doesn't matter what it turned to. It still doesn't understand that, right? But again, it's quite entertaining. This is exactly what you want to avoid. Uh, uh, and and I'm, I'm saying avoid because I know sometimes it will happen out of circumstances. You just find yourself in it, in a heated debate, an argument, a toxic argument with a woman. And you just want to be aware and, and not be dismissive, but avoid it, right? Uh, how do you do that? Actively listen to what they're trying to say without the need to be right, without the need to respond right now. Uh, with more so a need to understand what the other, where the other side is coming from, as opposed to uh, try and understand what they're saying, because what they're saying oftentimes is not the real truth of what they're trying to say, but it's coming from a place. And if you haven't listened long enough, uh, there's a good chance that you won't be able to respond in a masculine way, <laughs> if that's a thing for you, right? But in a way that is healthy, at least to attract what the kind of energy you're looking for from women, right? Supposed to be doing with their lives. That was the reason why I even came up here. Do you, did you did you see the the topic for tonight? The comprehension the topic. The topic wasn't yeah. what you said. Low. It's low. It's no, low. I mean that that's a problem. What, what are no, you the talking topic, about? No comprehension is a problem. Well, the look. topic was is the manosphere pseudo masculinity. That was the topic, sir. <laughs> Yo, this see. I mean, I don't even know what the hell that's supposed to mean. Okay. Pseudo masculinity. There's only one type of man. So if you don't know what it's supposed to mean, why don't you ask? Or are you just being sarcastic, right? Because again, you're triggered, right? Speaking of being triggered, right? This is how I know uh, that the person is triggered. This is my cue. If I want to know, this is like my number one cue to know if somebody is triggered or not, right? It's not what they say. It's about their action, right? Sometimes that action could be their words, but it's, it could be uh, it could be designed to negate, but it's actually tell me precisely if you're triggered or not. Let's watch I Am Not Triggered. <laughs> we don't understand. No, I didn't come up here to defend the manosphere. I really didn't. Um... So if you have to say, I didn't come here to defend the manosphere, that means you feel like the other person is reading you as defending the manosphere. Uh, there's a good chance that you came up there to defend the manosphere. Uh, when we talk about the book, The Secret and the Law of Attraction, there are a lot of men that will say, oh, that bullshit, right? And they don't understand what that means. What it means generally is if you say, I didn't come here to defend the manosphere, defend the manosphere becomes the subject of the matter. It becomes the actually dominating idea of the conversation and there's a good chance that people already feel you're defending the manosphere that's what we mean by a lot of times by the law of attraction or what you will learn from the book the secret right but it's so real uh it's mind-boggling <laughs> they're crying and, Alicia, and they're doing all the work i want to say bye to you i want to say bye to you i want to say bye to girl um yeah i'm leaving this channel they love to argue with women act Hello. like a lady Hello. I, Look, they love to hug you with women. Hello, hello. All right. Sign language is real. You're going to have to get some new tricks, like Anna. Like the, the old ones don't work anymore. Exactly. Anyway, anyway. This is not a trick. Thank you. Anna, it like is. Like you try trying emasculation mean, tactics. They don't work I against don't grown man. men. Try again. You're not a strong man, sir. But I said a, grown I, men. I, um, okay. She said, you're not a strong man, sir. <laughs> Let me play this clip real quick. I think it's a good time to play this clip right now. Let me just play this clip real quickly. Uh, this is, uh, we gotta do this. Hey! 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 Yo! Help me, nigga! Help me! Yo. Fuck wrong with you, nigga! Come on! Where my glasses? Get off of me, bro. Jump your goofy ass again. Now beat that, bitch ass nigga. Pay for this shit, and hurry up. No, come Pay for on. that shit and hurry up, bro. Drop Yo. your ass again. Touch me, get on the drop. Yo, stop video for they help me. You got my key. Come on, help you. Come on, help you. <laughs> hey, you can't trigger me. I think 
I think I don't have, have to. Be... She said you can't trigger me. If you have to say that, that's a good chance you're already triggered. It's too late. Come on, gentlemen. Come on. Okay. So yeah, Anna, go back to the drawing board. Go I back to the divestment community and get some more oh talking points. Oh my God, points. sir, be quiet. <laughs> I think we need to be late. Be careful. Like, don't premature. We shouldn't prematurely label these men. Oh, he's good, black man. He's doing. He he's up here actively arguing with women. He he's he's just as vindictive. He's just Annie, as petty. A a Anna, he's, just, he's over talking. Just Anna, as much. Anna, you I mean, I up? actually yeah, agreed with Jen on most. Now it's real. Uh, the gens of this world will call you out very fast. Also, because she's in that same energy, by the way, so let's not get that twisted, right? It's also because she's in that same energy. Hey, Just Jay, welcome, welcome. I think you're going to like what I'm doing right now, <laughs> right? Also because she's in that same energy. But more importantly, she's calling out because it's real. It's happening right there, right? So oh, the yeah. things that she said, um, please. Like, a little pushback doesn't not make it an argument. Because they say they're good black men. Like, Anna, you Anna, you're yeah, because no, no men black men are good men, right? Unless Sir, they kiss your you're ass, right? My, you're too feminine Ain't that right? for my taste. I need more bass in the tone, in the voice. Yeah. You're too feminine for me. Anna, like, yeah, I get thing. it. I, I, I get it. It takes a masculine man to kiss your ass, right? Anna, I want to ask Anna a question. Can I ask you a question, Anna? So every time a man knows how to have a conversation with a young lady, that means she's kissing, he's kissing ass is a simp. See, when a man talks that way, he tells you everything you need to know, okay? He tells you everything you need to know right there. He feels like if a man is in a place where he can have a conversation with some of the strongest masculine women like an Annalisa, um, it means the guy is kissing ass. That's what he just said. No, you, you cannot. Access denied. We're going to move on. Can Access you... denied. We're going to move Can on. Can I ask you a serious question? Access denied. The answer is oh, no. Oh, the answer, oh so that means you don't okay. want to answer a real question. But you no, just that wanna... means I'm not. Because she can read the condescension. She knows that you're trying to get her into a corner, and she's not going to allow that. She's him a masculine. She's not going to deny that either. <laughs> right? I don't know if she would, but it doesn't matter. Actions speak louder than words. But again, she's controlling the conversation right now. The fact that you said, can I ask you a question means that you already feel like you're not allowed to ask the question and she's telling you right away. Regurgitate things on and that's on. Okay, means. we get it. I'm not interested in you. Don't ask Obviously, me Obviously, nobody me. likes listening to you. That's why you do this. That's, right, but that's, I get it. Here. Oh, now, so he's throwing the sign language. Okay? So he couldn't maintain his frame because he just got triggered again, right? I get it. So, I, mean, I get here, it. This, this is the only way so you, you must can relieve like yourself. It. You I, must I like get it. I'm just saying. Another sign language is the only way you can relieve yourself, right? The shaming, the insults, it's back and forth. Hey, look, you called me feminine. You're I have not. Here, I have not like insulted guys, guys, a single woman up here. You, you must like. Which it. I wouldn't do. Here. You're still. Here. Oh wait, 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 wait. Is he receiving it as an insult? Being feminine is not necessarily an insult. Okay. Let, let me take that back. If if you receive it as an, ins as an insult, it's an insult, right? Uh, that's the truth, <laughs> okay? But let's talk about why you attracted that in the first place. Why did you find yourself in a space where a woman is actively trying to insult you? I know it's not your fault. It's not about fault. It's not about guilt, shaming, insult, condemnation. I'm just asking, how did you find yourself in a space where a woman feels the need to insult you? I get it. It's not your fault. I completely get it. But can we unpack that? Is it possible? Here. Guys, wait a minute. Let me just let me just say this. That was a rhetorical um, question. Juana is on her way back really yeah. quickly. I want her I want to get her on the panel. I want us to um do a cool down right now. <laughs> Because I'm about to end the stream. No, I want you to oh, watch value education. this video right here. I want you to watch this video right here. Uh, this is this guy was on the stage. He basically spewed a lot of nonsense in the name of him being a clinical psychologist. However, he got called out on it. He left in anger. It looked like he left in anger. And then he came back. He, 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 he uninvited himself, invited himself back again. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Watch it. <laughs> so, so D. Durrell is back. I didn't, oh, I didn't invite oh. you back, sir. What I said was, you're welcome to the panel at every, at any time. 
because you're in the comments barking like you're disgruntled about what happened up here. <laughs> I didn't tell you to go. No, no, to, to Jen's credit, Jen will tell you very quickly that he, she will shame your ass if you're coming off as a feminine man, right? Uh, she, she's admitted that, right? And I like it that she admits to that, you know, um, because that's, I, I think her channel is needed in this space, okay? Because I think we can extract some of these things and then we can see maybe how you can move a little bit better. If you find that in your personal life, you're finding yourself in this kind of space all the time. I didn't kick you out the studio. All I said was don't bicker and you're welcome to be on the panel at any time to so the first time he left the panel he went in the, into the chart and then started insulting them from there he, he wouldn't admit to in, that he's insulting them but that's precisely what it was he was basically throwing shots at them and this ladies uh tuana uh jen and analicia they're not the type to let you go they're not going to let you get away as they're on the show running the show they're also in the chat and they are actively responding to you in there. And then after that, you still don't have respect for yourself. Let me tell you something. If you want respect from women, it starts with respecting yourself. And sometimes it's by bowing out honorably, even if it feels like you took an L. It's okay to take an L and leave a conversation that is just not conducive, right? But he didn't get that memo, of course. He came back on stage. Make your point. That's yeah. what was said. It's the comprehension. It goes from the mouth and then before it gets to the ear, there's like an impediment. There's like, I, I, I don't know. It must be the female nature. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's the female. I don't know what so, it is. So, 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 so Jen, who, who? Wow. She said it must be the female nature, right? So you would think that women would not want to insult themselves to call a man a female, essentially call them the weaker sex, but they don't mind. Have you noticed they don't mind doing that if it comes down to quote unquote putting your putting you in your space if you're in your feminine energy, right? Who was I bickering with, Jen? She said a female. I wasn't bickering with anybody. You bickering with everybody. You and Anna were bickering back and no, forth. No, I was I was simply educating and, she, and I was interrupting. I was simply educating. I'm not here to bicker. Wait, what's this idea of educating people that didn't ask you to educate them, right? See, I created a channel for this purpose because honestly i'm okay talking to myself here well not really i know that the algorithms will find this content at some point right but the point is that why are you educating people or engaging people that didn't ask you for help why are you educating people that didn't admit to a problem or ask you a direct question what is i don't understand and rhetorical questions does not count right why are you doing that? That tells me a lot about your social skills as well. I was right just, now, you see what you're doing right now? No, like, ma'am. No, I'm, 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 I was expressing a thought. Okay, I can't but express you have to a wait thought. Till, listen, you have see, women do this effortlessly. I don't even think that Jen realizes she's doing it. Like literally educating him, but it's probably going away over his head, right? Like, see what you're doing right now? Like, it's true. He's doing it right there. The need to be right, right there. He's doing it, and he's throwing a little shame, insult, shade. These are things that you expect females to do. Sorry, females. <laughs> have to, the, how it works is you have to wait till someone makes a point and then you can jump in there with yours. Wait, wait, so I, I thought you were talking to me. I'm not. Do you, Jen, you're too nice. I thought I you know were nice. I know what it is. I know what it is. Try again. I'm going to try again. Let me see if I can finish my sentence. Okay. I said, after I finish my thought, you are more than welcome to say what you have to say. Go on. I can talk now. Absolutely, I finished. Okay, so so what what I was saying was that um what I was stating from my honestly even down to the I could talk now even down to that one right that was a condescending statement right there, all right. So I'm reading every picking apart everything again. It's about the whole energy, right? So everything is about to say after I can talk right now. It's probably gonna fall on the deaf ears. <laughs> How come these guys don't real? Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna be on a different level, but. Yes, you want to be able to read little things like that until it becomes a second nature to you and then you will see what I'm talking about. But right now, again, if you're caught up in your feelings, you can't see it, right? I, from my per for perception was that I was not bickering with anybody. I, w I was simply trying to educate and I was interrupted. Now, we can, we can agree to disagree. I was interrupted. If you have to say, I don't care if you're on Clubhouse. I understand the nature of Clubhouse. If you have to say I was interrupted, 
you were interrupted because you know it was falling on deaf ears whatever you're saying is not being welcomed okay again it has to do a lot with your social skills right there is a space trust me even on clubhouse or platforms or twitter space where you can do back and forth banters i would just hope that you're very aware that nothing good nothing productive is going to come out of it just because of the nature of that conversation okay so if you're in a romantic relationship then the last space you want to be is in this kind of vibes in this kind of uh, toxic uh environment okay with that but but what i want to talk about as it relates to the guy talking about or failure to talk about female nature and so forth so what yeah, i would I like to do it oh. anna let him finish please sorry 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 <laughs> Annalisa, you see i didn't even finish talking she interrupted you'll be interrupted I, I i hate that i didn't i don't have that clip here right now there's a clip of a guy that actually engaged them properly and he did a fantastic job actually i was about to pre predict predict him up front but i was wrong and he did a fantastic job and he made some really good points and of course you know this man they're gonna call him a simp right let's keep going okay so in the manosphere when you hear guys uh talk about female nature and in my years of listening to a lot of these guys talk about this and and, e and even incels that i've treated um when they're speaking of the female nature he's treated incels he claims he's treated incels <laughs> yeah right i doubt that very much if anything maybe you encourage them to remain incels but i could be wrong too i could be wrong right so manosphere is a reject support group that's what she said i didn't say that but let's see if she makes any sense out of this let's see uh jen right school me on the manosphere i am well versed i know what it is it's not an anomaly it's not a mystery it is not hard to comprehend it is a reject support group if you damn see one of the problems is that a lot of these guys a lot of a lot of the people in the manosphere don't realize i don't think they realize they're repeating the same talking points uh i don't think they realize that they lack uh creativity i wouldn't call it creativity but at least the lack uh the connection to real life to real world right um i don't think they realize that because if somebody listen to you to listen to just three live streams it's very it gets very obvious it becomes extremely like after that you could hear three sentences from the mouth of a person that is uh overly soaked into the manosphere and you know exactly where they're coming from and they just don't realize it and that's what she's speaking to right uh when she say a reject support group um unfortunately i have to agree with that i have to agree there the only way you find yourself on an average in this space is if you feel like you've been rejected or you feel there's some exceptions to the rule where somebody is trying to understand maybe they fell into it by mistake maybe like for example a dj academics was inside of a, a fresh and fit video and the algorithms kind of uh, connected you together and then you're watching like what the hell this sounds all weird if you're that kind of person to sound weird to you first because you can't relate right eventually you may start to find it fascinating and and then you're listening and then you're listening i happen to be that type of guy um, i've had my own experiences right but i was more so in the marriage and relationship and you could see a link there even though the manosphere would try to claim that this is about men support group it's not about women but they talk about women 99.999 percent of the time and i have to look at your actions if you were a desirable man you'd be on a date or married mm. or that's, that's your perception that's, no, that's, that's reality. your that's perception, reality. man. That's reality. That's reality. Yo, and so there is a, a Pookie, a Ray Ray, it sounds like it at least, um, that was basically pushing hard against them, right? He said, that was your perception. Well, exactly. That was the perception. What is the argument there, right? What is the per That was your perception. Well, that's the perception, right? Perception is real. When are you going to learn that perception is reality? And yo, you're yeah, talking to what's going to make for good content for me. Oh, yeah, bro. This is this is about a week's worth at <laughs> least. Do you understand that? Just me, when y'all use my content, well, y'all let me know when it's my turn. Yeah. Well, they said it's going to be good content. Let me just give uh, Jen uh, her credit. I did let her know I'll be using this clips. 
So let me let me give her her credit right now. This is what she said about using these clips. Attack the women on the panel. Take that shit to your other page, okay? If you're gonna use my content, cause y'all, this is gonna be a week's worth of content. Spell my motherfucking name right so they know where to look for me. Cause I tell you right now, I don't give a fuck who uses my content on the block with Jen, bitch. So they know where to find me. Now I'm trying to be as <laughs> diplomatic as I can be. Yeah. So this is this is getting real. I, I've got some more that I want to play, right? So this guy, if he thinks the manosphere gives me information, yes. In a lot of ways, the manosphere have uh, a, a lot of places where they may be giving some useful information. But of course, you know the negative travels further, right? Uh, I'll be very honest with you. Why am I playing this right now? There are multiple reasons why I'm playing this. The number one reason is because I found that it, it, it creates... Um, it allows me to be able to teach the lessons I want to teach from a very application driven standpoint. I have a hundred videos on this platform um, that I first led the, the channel with teaching game from a, a romantic standpoint, social skills standpoint, emotional. Maybe I have two videos about money in there, right? So, but uh, after the hundred, the plan was to bring some real life application and this was example of it, right? So the other reason, because I understand the human nature, uh, we listen to this, we learn from it, but it's also, you can hear the toxic argument part of it. And the likes of Jen, thank God for Jen, uh, because they're able to create this out of thin air by creating topics that will provoke the real, the, the real truth about why this space exists in the first place. And we will continue to uncover this, okay? I promise you, I will continue to uncover this as we continue to go. Because I don't think it's going to finish, you know. Oh yeah, I got I got to remove some of the videos from the from the studio. Let's see the next video here. Uh, it's about yeah, it's about if the manosphere gives information or not. Then you know you 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 treat them a, um, according if you're able to retract any kind of resources from a male and he's a sucker, then you know, you, you, you treat him um, accordingly. Now with the the information that the Red Pill community... Okay, Just Jay, so let me ask you, are you able to tell so far <laughs> that this is one of the students of the Manosphere? Are you, if you were to guess how many hours this guy spent listening to the Manosphere per week, how many hours would you think? Just off of two or three sentences that is ordered so far. What would you guess? Like how many hours do you think this guy spent listening to the Manosphere every week? If you were to guess, uh, I'm not sure if you're listening right now because I know the nature of this thing will go in and out. How many hours would you guess this guy listens to the Manosphere just off of listening to two? <laughs> exactly. 30 hours. Let me keep playing. <laughs> have for these young men, they give them, they give them information to watch out for certain snares when they, um, uh, interact with these, uh, with these women. You know what I mean? Like, you know, everything from like, you know, child support, um, alimony, um, you know, uh, false accusations on rape, etc. you know? And, um, I understand where, um, you know, the frustration could come from the female side because, you know, you know, a female is not going to have a full understanding of what a male got to go through when they're dealing with these kind of adversities and, and snares when they're dealing with, you know, with the with the female in that kind of lane. I mean, what's the female nature? Yeah. Can I can I what is the female nature, sir? Can you do? You so so he came here to. Whatever he just said, I don't know what the fuck he just said. I could just, the only thing I could tell is that he listened to the manuscript at least 30 plus hours per week, okay? <laughs> but after that, the, you know, obviously they were listening because they were, they were listening for an opportunity to basically attack him, right? Uh, whose fault is that? He puts himself in that space. He puts himself in that space. Uh, female do have nature. Uh, male men do, does have nature. We have nature as human beings as compared to lions, right? We're emotional beings, right? But I'm taking them out of context. Let's see what you're talking about, right? 
Do you know what it is? Could you enlighten me, please? In 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 modern in in modern day time, is is oh, you know changed? hypergamy on steroids. You know what I mean? So you know hypergamy I mean? on steroids. Is it hypergamy on steroids because of inflation, or is it hypergamy on steroids because what what do you what do you think it? She shit testing him at this point. Um. Well, one, the mass media, um, it do promote a lot of per, per, females to be promiscuous. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, you got the you not the promiscuity. No. Yeah, that's the, it's one of the quickest way, one of the one of the closest places that they run to very fast. How promiscuous women are, right? Is this really a real concern for you as a gentleman? Like. Why are you so concerned about promiscuous women? Oh, there's more promiscuous women on the streets. Really? Is that really the truth? Or you heard that from the gurus of the manosphere? Did you read that in the, in the rational mail? Mm. Have you had enough experience to know that women are just promiscuous all over the place? Or maybe you're the consumer of OnlyFans, right? Hmm. This is getting interesting. It's getting interesting. I'll tell you know you. the Megan Thee Stallions, the Cardi on, hold B's. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know on, they inf they have a large inf they have a large um fan base and they're able. Uh, hold on, sir. Um, okay. You said the media. It, it, I, I'm just gonna tell you straight up right now. It's gonna be hard for for this platform not to feel like it's attacking men. It's going to be very hard. It's gonna be a lot of hard work for me. But I guarantee you, that's not the purpose. The purpose is to tell you what not to do. The purpose is to tell you what to avoid. The type of behavior you need to avoid. Listen, you can come into the manuals where you end up here because you had some experience. A young lady took your heart out and stomped all over it. I get it. Right? Or you could relate with somebody who experienced that. Uh, like you said, prenup. <laughs> right? Um, uh, child support. All this unfair, unfair, unfair setup in society against men. Yes, those things are real right but this is precisely how not to fix those issues okay this is how not to fix those issues that's why i'm pointing them out is it uh, but, but let's differentiate let's let's name names but um is it men that that's pushing promiscuity like who benefits when women are promiscuous us me men men right so who so if why you take a guess, who do you think is pushing uh, the, the narrative, whether it be I'm going to tell you straight up, even on Alicia, I'm not engaging her in a conversation. Listen, unless she directly invites me, I doubt that very much. Right. I, I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't think uh, topics uh, uh, crosses each other's path, but never say never. Right. But I'm just saying in this space, in this conversation is where she's at. I'm not engaging her, but it's kind of funny that we have a lot of men that don't realize that uh, different vibrations, right? They don't understand what vibrations are, right? Neither one is one is neither right or wrong. It's just what it is. Like it's kind of interesting that they don't know how to read a room, right? She's shit testing you, and she's not sleeping with you. The only person that has the opportunity to shit test me is the person I'm sleeping with. That's it. The, the mother of my kids. And guess what? She still does it. Not deliberately, but there are times, there are moments where a conversation happens and she shit tests me, right? And the reason why I'm still in this 15 years later is because I've passed more than I failed. Have I failed the shit test sometimes? Yes. <laughs> yes. But you actively continue to put yourself in a situation where you're arguing with women on the internet, on clubhouse, and YouTube, and... You don't really want to look at the guy in the mirror and say, hey, why am I moving this way, right? Oh, oh, you need to blame an Annalisa for this? No, you don't get to blame her for this. You don't. Because if I were you, I wouldn't be engaged her in a place where she's actively, I could hear her trying to shit test me. Instead, I would probably say, what do you mean? Why, why, why are you asking that question? I'm asking that question because of what you said. What do you mean? What did I say? What part of it did I say? I would take control of that conversation immediately by asking what I call the open-ended quality questions. And if I couldn't, I would remove myself. It would be hard as hell, hard as shit, but I would remove myself. 
if I have to, if that's what I have to do. But of course, you gentlemen have the need to be right, of course, right? So you stay there until you get stomped up. You, your heart gets broken even worse and worse over and over again. It just gets worse. So you're building all this resentment. You're, you're building a perpetual, uh, a vicious cycle that you will never be able to escape. The high, the chances that you will escape it. I'm going to get to a clip here in a second where Jen was talking about there is hope. Well, the hope, <laughs> that hope, I don't know. Because you're building this thing by staying in, by spending 30 plus hours listening to rhetorics uh, all about how women is just at fault. And it's just never about how, how you attract the situations in your life, right? I don't know. Media, I mean, culture. obviously, the, the female does. I mean, mm. nah, female, the female, no, female, she benefits off being, being promiscuous. Females, females benefit from being promiscuous. Females are devalued. <laughs> uh, health, in terms of your well, health, I, I told you, are, you know, the, are, the Cardi B's are, and the Megan Thee Stallion. This, this is what. No, well, no. This Megan is what's Stallion in a new wave, is, right? Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion is not just J. They're not the normal human beings normal people that you encounter in your personal life they're not so i i don't see the correlation i don't see the comparison outside of influence i guess they do influence but even the influence they have it has limitations right has limitations especially the way you move as a man in this society see if people are coming to the table if somebody if some kind of megan d stallion come into my space she's coming into my space and if I engage that, I better have enough emotional intelligence to engage that level of influence, right? It's very likely I wouldn't be able to tolerate that. It's just likely, right? Or somebody who takes on. There's a lot of, I mean, even inside of this live stream, you will hear Tawana admitting to be a beehive. Does that mean she's uh, living that life every single second of the day? So why bring in the city girls culture and every conversation about women in general, right? Megan no. Thee Stallion I mean, doesn't represent black women as a whole, so we're going to just leave that alone. And in, in even goes. female black rappers, um, it, for them to have the notoriety that they have today, they never had before. It's it's, it's really, rap has always been male-centered. It's, it's, it's always been a male-centered industry. I just want to know, um, who do you think is pushing that that narrative or, or that culture? She has, she has, she has influence. From who? She has, she has a large fan base. Yeah, I know Sorry. the answer. I know the answer to that. And and you're not gonna. So, they, they, and I heard they what were, you had to say. They, she wasn't asking him. You see, another man say, "I know the answer to that. I know the answer to that." Uh, in the first place, they shouldn't be on that panel. <laughs> You would have to beg me. Now I get it. Uh, if if I was the only people that should have been on that panel are people, maybe Durrell, uh, one of the people in their camp. But all these other guys, unless you deliberately invite me to that panel to come and speak on a topic that I understand that you've deemed me to understand, I would not be on that panel to argue back and forth. It could be a little light debate here and there, and I and I can respectfully say, oh no, I disagree. It is why. You wait for me, I make my point, I make my point. If we don't have that kind of space, no, I'm not having the conversation. And it's not arrogance, it's just nothing productive is going to come out of it. It's a waste of my time. And uh, the only way I will have this co kind of conversation is if you're paying me for it. Hence where we're creating this content as well. <laughs> you basically said that they teach you that women are hypergamous and using you. And so they put you on game and they That's let you know time. how women think. That's what That's you told that's female nature. The female, the female nature. nature. If you, you figure say, out the female you nature. You say some men, some masculine alpha men in the manosphere teaching you about female <laughs> nature. You do Sign language. You said. This is what you just, I mean, I'm just saying, listen to what you're saying. What? How can they teach you that? I it don't se understand. Yeah. It, it, it seems like they're, it seems like they're the perfect woman. Right, like they. If you're, the, if you're the perfect woman, come out and say that. Right, like why would they be able to tell you about female man. nature? They get don't know. A high, like, if you're the perfect woman, if you have the feminine nature to a T, to a science, <laughs> get you a high value man and be right, okay right. with like, it. Teach them how to get. Teach us how to get a high value man because they so good at telling y'all about female nature. I don't understand. 
can How somebody tell me what it is? Do that. What's it for, what is the female nature that, that black men it, it need to be so educated funny. about? Be, because when I think of the, the nature. Right. So, on. so remember that guy that I was talking that uh, just Jay, you predicted that he listens to the manosphere about 30 plus hours per week. Let's see what the ladies have to say about that. Let's see how well you did with your prediction just Jay. Not to get played because, yo, there's a lot of suckers out here that's getting played. I mean, Listen. ain't nothing wrong for a group of males to inform males to be careful from the snares of women, of the modern day female. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that. Listen, ain't listen. A crime. let me tell you what they're doing. You sound wow. like you sound like a robot. You literally right. sound like a robot. Like the way y'all sound, it's literally the What's same. What's up, Auntie? What's going on, D Darrell? It is the Salute. same conversations. You guys regurgitate what they're telling you about women, and you say it over and over. It's like you're on a, you're wishing on a, a star or you're like rubbing a genie or something. Nah, it's like, nah. It's the really, reason, no, hold on, no, hold on. No, Let me, no, no. Let me, me finish my quick. statement. Let the me reason, the reason why, jets, right? I the heard you why, talk. I know what you the guys say. The reason why the community. Know. Oh, can you mute him, please? Okay. The I reason why the community has done. The, the, the reason why talk? they all sound the same can is because y'all you you doing stop? the same shit stop? over and over. I don't care. Mute. Thank you. We've heard what Thanks. you have to say about women, but let me let you know nah, that this connection. All right. So if you engage women at this in this type of energy, see. Fuck your facts, okay? That's a video I'm actually gonna go find. Maybe I'll react to it later. That, all that fucked feeling, fuck the feeling nonsense. No, fuck your facts. If you're engaged with a woman with this type of energy, what what do you expect to come out of it? I don't understand, right? That's an addition to the fact that she predicted, I mean, accurately, right? You sound like a robot, and Just Jay also predicted that here earlier, right? It's true. They regurgitate the same stuff over and over. Now he claims that it's because the behavior of the women are consistent. That's what he claimed as well, too, right? Right. So, yeah. I mean, this is what we're trying. This is the problem we're trying to solve. Um, the, how do you how do you bring some creativity in this? You have to approach these issues at individual levels, right? We have to get rid of the whole data point stand talking point. You look at data. And you say, okay, what do we get out of this? Let's apply that to real life right now. Instead of disengaging completely from application and then acting like there's no real world where people are actually experiencing good time with ladies, right? Yes, probability says otherwise, but that's probabilities, right? That's data, right? What about possibilities? The natural thing you're supposed to engage as a man who is after his own purpose. If you're a man who is after his own purpose, are you really just looking at statistics to determine your next move? Or you're looking to move in the most utmost way into the highest heights that you could possibly get to as a man, right? So this is a, ser this is a serious problem, a serious epidemic out here. Um, you are unattractive. This is a serious problem, and, and we, we need to address it. I, 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 we need to keep talking about it. Okay. You may be shy. You may have personality issues. There are a lot of people who suffer from very real personality issues. Yeah, narcissism. Uh, once Nar again. And, and, and psychopathy. Once again, that's and, not and narcissism. It's impossible that's not what narcissism to have a conversation Yeah, narcissism if a is, a, is a personality disorder. I'm a, I'm a mental. So, so narcissism is a personality disorder that you have to actually diagnose individuals. But she's talking in general. The same talking points that men tend to. We're just talking in general. We're not talking about the exceptions to the rules. Well, she's doing the same thing. She's not talking about anybody in particular, right? She's saying you have to pick that up yourself. She's saying these are narcissistic traits. She's not saying she's trying to diagnose anybody. But watch what they're about to do right now with the semantics. Watch this. People do this in their marriage. And then they wonder why she doesn't want to feel like having sex. Watch it. Mental health professional. That is not narcissistic. As am I. And no, if it's you not. have a personality yeah, disorder, clearly, no, it's not. Be, clearly. You you yourself, so you're self assessing. And no one in the medicine. So you're self assessing without meeting someone. Disorder, do they? you know that's unethical? Are you self assessing without even meeting someone face to face? Oh, no. now we're talking about unethical. All right. How disingenuous is that, right? Now, she's wrong. But again, remember, it's not about right and wrong. 
you found yourself in this argument for a reason and you're deflecting. <laughs> you know what? I, I actually, are, are you I, trained? I are you, you trained in the assessments and appraisals right, to, you know to measure doing? personality? You know what I'm doing, are, are, are you not? Do you? Stop it. There's articles all over the place on, on, on what makes up what the disorder is. There's articles everywhere, right? But again, that doesn't mean you can diagnose people. I'm not saying she's right. <laughs> Now you want to be ethical, yeah, right. You have a psychology degree. You have <laughs> you know a master's degree you know in, in counseling, doing, sir? like sir, I do. You know so I'm how you going to tell me? How you going to tell me what is or what's not? I have over twenty you don't years have experience. To have Until degree? you get that experience, you need to be right. quiet. It's not. No, you're I'm wrong. Not be that quiet. is not what narcissism so you don't have to have means. Psychology. It's the big words for me. It's the big words. It's like that time that I got dragged on the T T T L S uh T L S uh platform, right? A lot of people just, as much as they were accusing me of not knowing what sign language was, they were stuck in the need to be right. Everyone, you'll see S dot, S dot, I dot, G dot, N, uh, shame. Everybody was spelling it out. Like, come on, how, how more do you need to tell me that you are a square and you lack social skills? Yeah, those are the indications. I mean, I could predict, I could see them from 10,000 miles away, right? Appraisals. Why do we need to use that word in this conversation? completely not necessary right that's rollo tomasi right big words just big words a bunch of word salad you know his book is really really good his book is really really good i have to give him that but everything outside of the book is a bunch of nonsense um but let's keep having the conversation that is right? not what narcissism means just oh not everything but a lot of stuff i want to be fair to him i do like rollo but uh, the application is terrible. Just because Catalog, someone may have traits of a, a it's, it's the difference between having no. traits of an illness as far as having full fledged mm -hmm. classic narcissism. Okay, so that is not hold on, hold so the 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 all the, the conversation changed directions completely. Just because you need to tell us that you know what narcissistic uh uh personality disorder or whatever that is, the, the personal disorder is. Right? Anyone can Google that. That's not what these conversations are about. And that's why this conversation tend to be missing a lot. Right? Hold on, you don't know what you're hold talking on, about. On, be quiet. On, you don't on, know what you're on, talking on. about. You're missing. Oh, he said be quiet. He's triggered. How do you tell people shut up, be quiet, and you're not triggered? Oh, I didn't say shut up. I said be quiet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> you Wait don't a know minute. what you don't know what you narcissistic, don't have to have narcissistic the personality no. means. So, you're, so you're, be quiet. So what you you're don't know. Is, Hold you on. just just say you don't you're know what it means. Speak. You you're, don't you're not me because because no one really, really knows what, what narcissism means. Would say that oh, sure. that is not what narcissism means. Okay, what, what that's is over twelve to fifteen narcissism? traits that classify that, and then you also have to have that those traits. You have to have at least eight of the twelve running conjunctions. Sure you have to have nine. You're only talking you about a few nine. things based on a subjective attitude for people that you. So she said you have to have nine because again, since everyone is stuck in. Their need to be right. Now you're arguing with the woman. You bring yourself down to equal with a woman, and you deserve every masculine energy that comes from that. This shit works a hundred percent of the time. You create that polarity that glue you guys together because one side is masculine and the other is feminine. That's how it came about. So the question is, who is masculine? Who is feminine? That's the question. The only way you stay there and engage is because one is masculine, one is feminine. Oh, well, you know what? Because there's, a, there's also a, a, a mismanaged uh, disorder in the way the mix of the two energies happens, there's chaos, right? So maybe both of you were in your feminine energy or both of you were in your masculine energy. But bottom line is that there's something chaotic going on there and it's not good. At least not for any kind of long-term relationship. We know that. Oh, yeah, this is not a long-term relationship, right? Oh, yeah, but you're going to have to prove to me that this is not how you argue with your wife at home. I know. It's just YouTube, right? It's not that deep. You're right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. So here's Jen trying to tell us there's hope for everybody, right? Uh, you know, after dragging the minus fair through the mud. And now she's trying to tell us there's hope for everybody. Let's hear about this. Hey, Jen, you mind if I cut in hope. for a second? <laughs> Wait a minute, Daryl. Let me finish yes, so we're not talking over yes, each other. Yes, I'll throw it to you after this. There is hope for everybody. I don't care if you have a gut, 
I don't care if you're short. I don't care if you have a receding hairline. I don't care if somebody called you ugly back in the fifth grade and you never got over it. That's a lie. <laughs> she said that's a lie. <laughs> she said that's a lie. Let me see the, whole, the meaning of hope. I know what hope means, but since we're all a square and we like to... <laughs> A feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Of course, there is hope for everyone. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, right? It doesn't mean it's gonna happen, right? So you know, Analicia, she's more of the analytical uh, person on that stage, and she said uh, that's a lie. <laughs> okay, no, that. Well, I think it's very unlikely when you immerse yourself in the manosphere. 30 plus hours a week. I think it's very unlikely. It's a very unhealthy place to be in life, especially if you have resentment against women uh, based off of what I can observe, right? Uh, I think you're digging deeper hole for yourself. I think you're going to create a vicious cycle for yourself. I think the best thing to do is to go seek therapy. If you find that you're not necessarily creating content, so, so for me, I do spend a certain amount of hours in this space because I need to know what to react to because I know all the toxic stuff happens here, right? So if you're not creating content and you find that you're engaging more than 30 plus hours a week as a man in the manosphere, I would definitely suggest to engage therapy or at least counseling with your pastor and you need to unpack all of these different things going on from a place of emotion, emotions, okay, from an emotional standpoint. Okay, that same thing that you're trying to discount, that you're trying to pretend doesn't exist. You need to unpack all of this because I'm telling you, unless you live in a cave, <laughs> unless, what's up, L. Nixon? Unless you live in a cave, right? I'm telling you that um, this is going to get worse for you. You're creating a vicious cycle. So I agree with Annalisa there that uh, I don't know, I, while there is hope, I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's hope, you know. I don't know if you continue to stay in this space. There is hope. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. And at least. <laughs> okay. There's hope for okay. everybody. If you're ugly, you can dress nice. No. Okay. If you're short, you can improve your personality. Okay. If Yo, come on, man. Come on, man. No. No, there's. You can, but how are you going to increase your personality if you're busy regurgitating and soaking in all this negative rhetoric about women? I don't know. We're human beings. We're spiritual beings. It's going to be hard to do that. It's going to be extremely hard to do that. Hope. I've seen it. Okay. I've seen it. But they're not going to get there listening to these losers on. That's a typical woman for you right there. She still finds a space in her heart to have empathy for you and say, hey, maybe there's hope, right? I don't know. You know, I think there is hope. But I think uh, more important than anything else, I think um, a man needs to be a man in this society. Um, men, women will give you advice and say there's hope and all this kind of stuff, but you're going to have to do a little bit better than, uh, than, than, than following hope. You know, you're going to have to uh, step your game up and stop depending on women to validate you because that's precisely what your actions are saying, right? That's what your actions yeah. are saying. Right? It's crazy, man. You have to disconnect. Analicia also has a personal attachment to her. Yeah, I've said that earlier. You came late. Yeah, Analicia is definitely, uh, it, it, there's a lot of stuff that's hitting the nerve for her. She's going to have to prove to me that, uh, <laughs> she's going to have to try hard to prove to me that this is not personal. She tried to claim that, but I, I doubt it. You know, I doubt it just like everybody else, right? So I don't know, you know, it's it's gonna it's gonna be hard that you know she's pushing all this rhetoric, black man, black man, black man. Again, when you speak from a place of WCC and generalizations, WCC is worst case scenario. It's very hard for you to tell me that this is not personal and that you're not gonna project this into your future relationships. It's gonna be very very hard as long as you're human like the rest of us. It's gonna be very hard. She counsels young girls and single mother. She stated, she told her therapist she's going to be in therapy all her life. Yeah. Yeah, it's real. It's real. But we're talking to men. You know, let's not worry about Analicia. We're talking to men in general. You're going to encounter Analicia in this world. In fact, Analicia is going to be the best leverage point for you to learn how to handle women. Okay? You need to think about... You need to... You need to think about a situation where you find yourself 
in a world where life is not fair. Isn't that the kind of real world we live in? Right? It's not about fairness. If you're in the pursuit of fairness, you're going to fail. Right? You're going to fail. It's not going to work for you because that's not, you know, you're going to approach things from a standpoint I need to attack women because you think it's supposed to be fair because now you're thinking things are not fair, right? So naturally, you hold resentments. Naturally, you feel attacked. Naturally, when people feel attacked, what do you want to do? You want to defend yourself. What does defending yourself look like on the outside world? You're offending other people. Right? You're going to offend people, right? Because if you're going to feel the need to defend yourself, you might as well attack, right? You might as well offend, right? Or even if you don't mean to do that, right? Even if that wasn't your attack intentions. attack these women and insult them. Just wait your turn to speak. You'll have your turn. Okay? I mean, when is my turn? When I say it is. She's going to take my turn right now, then. Okay, no. She said, when I say it is, she just told you that you are a nobody. If you were, if you understand how women work, right, or if you understand power dynamics, you should just chill a little bit. Let her, okay, all right, sure, sure, bet, and you should exit right away. But of course, you lack self-respect, right? Of course, of course, you have the need to be right. Of course, now you're going to make her know how you feel. You're gonna compete with her, <laughs> right? You, you have to hurt her feelings back, right? Let's watch him hurt her feelings back. No, you're not. You're going to wait. Fine, waiting for shit. Fuck it, man. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, Bye. yo, triple Bye. seven salute to you, bro. <laughs> and then you have another man saying, triple seven salute to you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Of course, of course, if you see me in the house, please, you can always expect that I will be doing these reactions, especially to Jen, because I like Jen, and I, I like her, uh, you know, and she's giving me the, the green flag to do this. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, if I see any of this content, let me know. Tag me. Uh, I, I talks B. Tag me. <laughs> okay, you can see it on the screen right there. I want to know about it because I want to respond to it because this is how we're going to learn, watching the actions, watching how people act, not what they say, not what I'm saying either. Okay, see, if you look at my face, this expression of emotions on my face, right? Yes, because I'm human being. I'm a human being like the rest of us, right? As opposed to discounting emotions, right? As opposed to discounting emotions. Thank you, all, Nixon. I know you got me. I know you and Just Jay got me all day long. Thank you so much. We got to keep having this conversation, okay? But beyond just the talking echo chambers, we have to take it beyond that. Because I feel like there's a lot of young men and women that will be hearing the wrong things. If a bunch of young women are hearing the manosphere as the raw, it's not healthy either. They're going to end up becoming unhealthy pygmies. There's nothing good. I don't agree with the idea that pygmies is what you're looking for. I don't agree with that. I think you should be careful with pygmies because um, there's a blind spot. Because women are women for a reason. That's a good thing. If you see it as a weakness, that's your problem. There's strength in women being women. The idea that they have to relate with us or be able to rationalize with us like men, it's a, it's, it doesn't work. That's going to show up on other side of things that you're not going to like. Okay? You look, you're looking for women to, ration, to rationalize talking points like you. That's not what you're looking for. That's not what a feminine woman look like. A feminine woman don't give a shit about your talking points. She doesn't give a shit about your feelings, as a matter of fact. Okay? She's... She's actively at any point in time looking for opportunities to multiply. So if you're not bringing shit to the table, there's nothing to multiply. You're right. She brings nothing to the table except the essence, the beauty of the feminine energy. But then we're grooming a lot of quote-unquote pygmies. There's some of them that are good. There's some of them that you could hear in between that you're like, ah, yeah, I could see that. I could, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could, I could see through all the way through that. We have to be careful. All right. So here, this young lady is predict the future of this young man who sounds like a goddamn robot. You have no, you, you just, you're, li you're operating from a place of like computerized, like a woman just has a program in her back. And that's just like how she's going to act. All women are going to behave this way. And that is just absolutely wrong. You're never going to meet a woman. I'm telling you. 
And if you do have one, she's miserable as hell right now. Miserable. Because you don't even know how to connect with women. It's highly likely that she is correct. Now, there are exceptions to the rules, right? Of every rules. But it's highly likely. And I do remember seeing your headphones. I'm not sure if you are the one that you're going to receive this as an attack. I'm not sure who was talking because as you can see, the screen I was looking at was, I was actually working and I, and I had the phone and I was listening, right? You can see that it's a phone that I was listening to. So I do remember, I don't know which one of them you were, I think you were the quiet one. You were the Durrell's partner and you were a little bit more uh, balanced than Durrell. Durrell was all over the place. He was basically out of control, <laughs> right? He was basically, he, all his feminine energy came out, right? So I think you were his partner and then you were trying to find the balance there, but it wasn't working too well. Uh, but I'm not sure if you were the one that actually spoke eventually and they really, really respected. There was another gentleman that spoke eventually that they really, really listened to it and they liked it. You may have been that person. Yes, I think that was you. Uh, but I know you were not the guy who was the robotic guy. I, 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 I know for sure for that. But yeah, let's keep playing this. You're sitting here regurgitating some bullshit. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're not even trying to find out how to connect with a woman in real life. Y'all are like <clears throat> people I don't even want to get to know. That's it's just weird. That's all I'm saying. That's what's so open, man. Have a personality. Can I talk? Like, or... Yes. Do you even have a personality? No, you're like so busy focused on what's wrong with women and how they hypergamous and trying to get the psychology down pat. You you sound like a con artist, sir. <laughs> That's, I'm, you sound like a pickup nah, artist. Nah, yo, you. Nah, yeah, I mean, nah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that wasn't you, Ant. Um, hopefully that wasn't you, man. You know, but. Um, yeah, it was a shit show. You're absolutely right. And that's why we're reviewing it now. This is this was absolutely crazy, you know. Uh, so watch this one right here. Um, Durrell. Now, Durrell is a guy. D Durrell. Yeah. I follow Durrell. Let's be clear. I, I follow Durrell. You know, uh, Durrell, uh, Durrell is uh, the guy that's, uh, that keeps his foot on the manosphere neck. <laughs> right um his energy is not you know doesn't really match mine that much but i feel like um uh, this he makes a lot of good points you know it makes a lot of good points uh but he's also a young man you know i, I think he's admitted to that that you know there's a long ways to go but if you try to drag Durrell, he's dragging your ass that's just uh and that's the way and, and funny enough i saw a video where he was uh where he was um uh, he was basically a defined Alicia. Like less than a week later, they were button heads. That's crazy, man. So that's that's that situation right there. But uh, let me play this video for you. I do respect a lot of our uh, Durrell's point, standpoint in the manosphere space than a lot of the other gurus. Let me just say that right now, you know, uh, so that everyone is clear on where I stand here. I am out. I, I do whatever manosphere is like right now. I can only touch them with a pole. I'm watching and I'm responding so that other people can have a space to come to and hear how real life works. Because I realize that they are a lot louder and if one or two people can end up here and listen to what we're saying, uh, maybe we can save a few people. So um, let's, let me play this video for you. And this is uh, him being called a simp for obvious reasons, right? It's very funny. It's usually the simps that are very quick to call people a simp. But let's uh, let's listen. Yeah. No, it's, it's it's you're not a real man if you can't have a conversation with a woman and just shut the fuck up and let her speak. And I don't need a um a, a response for that. Um, but to Tawana's point, Yo, when you the sound show like first a started, fucking simp, man. Yo, you, let me let me replay that. You need to hear that. For <laughs> simping. Yeah. No, it's 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 you're not a real man if you can't have a conversation with a woman and just shut the fuck up and let her speak. And I, if you can't have a real conversation with a woman. You're not a real man. I mean, there's a lot of truth to that. I don't know what a real man, a man is a man, uh, you know, but maybe a masculine man, maybe an alpha man. I don't know what the fuck, what kind of label should we give these days? I'm confused, right? But a man that needs to create a desirable result is definitely not the man that doesn't know how to have a conversation with a woman, okay? That's definitely not that man right there, right? 
So if you're a man and you're not able to create results, just look at results. Just look at the kind of conversation you extract out of women. Yes, you're a spirit. You do extract certain energy out of them, right? Just look at that. Look at your results. And then you'll be able to determine if, uh, if you're creating the kind of results you want or not, right? I don't need a, um, a response for that. Um, but to Tawana's to point. That's that dual energy. He doesn't need a response. But guess what that other guy is going to say? The number one simp in the room is going to call out the simps. That it works 100% of the time. Just watch it, right? Just listen to this really quick. You can't talk about a simp if it doesn't involve entitlement and expectations, right? The idea of expecting other men to pander to you, that's simp behavior, okay? That's simp behavior precisely right there, okay? At least that's a soy boy behavior, right? You should expect other men to hold you accountable if you're doing things wrong. I expect that, right? I get pushed back because of the way I kind of come off a little bit as, uh, you know, attacking men. And I'm okay with that because I need that because there were times that I didn't have empathy as well, right? Yo, you sound like a started. fucking simp, man. Yo, yeah, man, you gotta let the brother that's finish, cool. bro. This is why you're that's never cool. gonna have a girl. This is why Hold up. Man, let, let the brother right. finish. Can y'all let the brother I mean, finish, man? I'm not about to go back and forth. I came here to say what I said. You know, I'm yeah. I'm solid like that. At the end of the day. Yeah. So, I think, let me see. I think there may be one more clip here. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, th There's... um. There were a couple of clips that I wanted to cover, but um, I think we're going to round off today with um, making sure we respond to the comments, some of the comments uh, that we received since the last time we came here. Uh, it's very important that I continue to engage um, with us here, with the people that I engage in. So please, if you're watching this as a rebroadcast, make sure you leave a comment. Um, if you're watching me as during the live stream, I always want to know that you're watching live stream. That's why I appreciate the Just Jays. Uh, they do let me know and the Sir Hills when they're in the house. So I appreciate that. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you're sharing. Let everybody know that I'm here uh, talking about this. Uh, at some point, I will start posting on my Instagram. I just want to make sure that we're getting the momentum up here. Uh, what do I mean by momentum? Let me see. Let me show you what I mean by momentum. Let me show you really quickly what I mean by momentum. I want to share my screen right now so that you can see how we're doing on the channel. Uh, your help is needed in terms of growing the channel, okay? Uh, that's why I will continue to engage your comments, okay? Just to make sure that uh, you understand that your family here as well, right? All right, so here is the screen. Let's look at the screen. All right, so here's the screen right now. All right, good. So we have uh, 81 subscribers right now. I, I'm not showing it. I only show it at the end of these sessions. Um, just, um, just to make sure that we are truly having an organic uh, growth here. All right. So, uh, as usual, a lot of the comments that we're getting is coming from, um, it's coming from, uh, it's coming from, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, Tariq Nasheed, uh, the first video that we have that blew up here. Tariq Nasheed is the leader of the Foundation of Black Americans movement, okay? I'm looking for the frame that I need to show right now. Let's see. To read Nasheed, uh, let's find him. Uh, let's see, do I have it? I, I think I have it somewhere. Okay, all right. So, um, it, it, O'Shea Duke Jackson, one of the godfathers of the manosphere space, has a couple of things to say about. Uh, had a couple of things to say. Um, so, uh, to 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 read Nasheed, and I want to review that video with you. I think it's important that I review that video with you as well as uh, respond to some of the comments here. Uh, let's see here, some of the comments that we have. So as you can see here, if I go on to my analytics here, uh, you can see that we've had such a tremendous growth over the past one month, okay? So that's just to show you that, you know, we're working uh, almost 2,000 in growth level, 150% in subscribers. Uh, this I expect to be always slower.
but YouTube is showing up some love. It's showing up some, it's showing us some love. Um, very quickly here, you can see 46% is basically YouTube recommending the video. So thank you so much. When you do like, subscribe, and share, that's helping us, right? The most popular video uh, on this platform right now is uh, the Tariq Nasheed video versus Nigerians, okay? And it continues to be that way. Even if I look at in the last 48 hours here, uh, is that video. It's both of Tariq Nasheed's video. So I have to kind of like uh, keep feeding the beast, all right? Um, because th at the end of the day, this is uh, for profit, okay? So we can afford to keep going, okay? Because my time is worth a certain amount of dollars. So if we go under the comment here, we can see uh, there's a few comments since the last time we came here. Uh, B, get this work. Okay, I don't know if that, that person is uh, calling the woman a name. Uh, you're right. You have the right to be right on this platform, always. Uh, this person says, the point Tariq is making is Africans do not fight white supremacy. They don't fight it here and they don't fight it at home. How, are you sure about that? You know, again, a lot D will you're speaking out of your ass. Sounds like uh, there's a lot of uh, human rights movement fight against racism, fight against colonialism, fight against uh, imperialism in Africa. Uh, if I'm right, the whole Pan Africanism movement is around that, right? So I'm not too educated on that, but quote me. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so we have to remind them on their lands, not because we are better, but because we need to remind them of what white supremacy has done to their country so they can get back on code here in America. Okay, all right. Again, you have the right to be right. Thank you for that submission. This person said, you don't sound American at all, but very Nigerian. I am Nigerian, uh, American by birth, Nigerian by heritage, Nigerian by identity by everything else i'm only american by birth okay so you're correct on that all right then we have a person gave us a thumbs down here uh you are also right you have the right to be right i appreciate that uh immigrants sold fba foundation of black americans into slavery africans are losing because the same mindset still exists in africa in a lot of ways, I would agree to this. In a lot of ways, okay? Uh, even this, right? Uh, immigrants sold uh, foundation of black Americans to slavery. Uh, but the reason why is because slavery was part of the human culture at the time, okay? So not only were they selling each other into slavery, they did it before the whitey came into the land to each other. Uh, it was basically... Uh, uh, a way of status not it wasn't just slavery it was basically conquering different villages different settlements right that's basically what that was about at that time okay why don't just leave uh foundation of black uh black uh americans alone i guess alone well once this comment stop i'll probably the, this comment and um, the content online and, you know, uh, the response, once it stops, I will probably stop, okay? Because at the end of the day, this platform is for profit. And the way the algorithms work, I have to pay attention to where the topics are hot, okay? Uh, and then I extract my lessons out of it, okay? Uh, ladies, never fight a man. Just stop dealing with him, period. I am guessing that's a woman that says that. This is on a TLA, on a TLA video right here. So we had a... A few videos that came out of that okay so it looks like that's a woman that says that I appreciate that as well all right um, so this person says you're going about this the wrong making it a point that all blacks don't agree with Tariq oh well, we're gonna about we're about to find out right now I know uh, O'Shea Duke Jackson uh, we're about to find out in a second <laughs> okay we want to find out what he has to say uh, since it's a foundation of black American, right, uh, from Louisiana, I think he says, right. Let's be clear, as a man who also does TBE work for black, foundation of black Americans, people please stop that. The only people that don't agree with reparation or foundation of black Americans are old people who sold us junk out and immigrants. You are being warned 
and your right to stay out of our affairs. Man, uh, we of foundational black Americans shutting all the disrespectful immigrants. Hey, you have the right to do what you have to do, uh, soldier boy. Uh, you have the right to your opinions, and I uh, can respect your opinion. I agree with you that in general, okay, so I don't have a say on this at all. I don't have the right. As I agree that people that are not foundational black Americans should not have a say on whether uh, they deserve reparation or not. Uh, in fact, whatever you want as a group of people, I will support it as long as it's within uh, ethics, ethical, um, as long as it doesn't uh, trample over other people's rights, uh, which I don't think reparation does that. Um, but yes, I don't have the right to speak to it. This is just another media platform. So you're right about that. All right. So with that being said, uh, what I want to do at this point in time is I want to play that video of uh, O'Shea Duke Jackson. I want us to review that together. And uh, I think it's going to be, you're going to find it interesting. You know, he had uh, a few choice of words. O'Shea, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. I have been... Yes, absolutely. Me either. You know, I just... Uh, there was uh, an attack between Nigerians and Tariq Nasheed uh, last week or two weeks ago, and I did a video about it, and the video completely blew up. Uh, like We have like 1,200, and that that ignited this channel. So, <laughs> so I have to kind of like... Uh, cover it not necessarily having an opinion about it i don't have any opinion about it i don't get into debates either uh black americans versus african talks i have too many friends and three ex from friends girlfriends who are from africa that's yeah yeah same here or uh, most of the foundation of black americans people i know personally are extremely respectful people and they probably won't have the tone that that person just had just now either but it doesn't matter it's uh, youtube uh everyone is allowed to troll Let's continue the video. I've been very vocal in my support for our brother Tariq Nasheed. I believe that in comparisons to people in the community like Umar Johnson, he gets things done. I look at him as somebody who is um, at least more focused on what he's trying to do. I know people may feel that he may switch lanes quite often, but his Hidden History Museum being able to garner close to $2 million at the last minute shows that Tariq Nasheed can do things that none of us on black social media can do. He can galvanize an organic based audience and pitch an idea to make it work. That's something that nobody else can do. Even Umar Johnson can't do. I mean, that's a fact. You know, there's a lot of people, um, even foundational black Americans that are attacking him for raising money. But you need money to for a movement. You do. And there's no movement out there that the leaders have not been attacked. So I don't see that completely out of the ordinary either. But I think that's a great thing that's able to galvanize his people and and create a movement, you know, that's, that's meaningful enough for people to follow him, right? That. And I, I celebrate the brother for that and I'll continue to support him for that. I myself have been called out for supporting Tariq Nasheed. As you can see here, here's a video from Pan-Africanism Pan Strikes Back. It says O'Shea Duke Jackson simps for comment Tariq Nasheed. So I've been also ridiculed for my support of this brother. So when I come and I look at the comments for you people talking about I'm a sellout. Well, yeah, I've been ridiculed too. I had Africans came in and say, hey, stop, stop appeasing these people, right? It's natural when you, when, especially if you expect it. If you have a platform, you're trying to create a movement, whatever it is, you should expect that they will be pushed back against it. As a matter of fact, uh, that's how the strength of the movement will be tested. Um, because of my last video, I don't like African Americans. I need to make a choice. I'm simple from Africans. I just don't understand what you're talking about. And see, we have to be able to wait, wait, wait. Simple for Africans? Uh, that could be true because I saw I just stumbled into a podcast uh, platform by O'Shea Duke Jackson called the Ken 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 Gundat. I, I forgot, but it's a he has a new uh, po uh, podcast platform right now. Uh, where he's talking to uh, some fine uh, young African women there. So maybe he's sipping. You never know, right? Disagree without trying to throw somebody away and say that they're a sellout, all right? Um, I've been to Africa 19 different times, but let's just be real. I'm an African-American that's in Africa, all right? I am what you would call hashtag FBA, hashtag ADOS. Now, that's very true. When you do travel to Africa, 
your outlook on the relationship between Africans and black Africans and black Americans will change. Okay, uh, most people that have traveled to Africa will tell you that very quickly there's something, there's something very spiritual that happens to you when you do go to Africa. Okay, so I would definitely suggest that even if it's just for tourism reasons, just travel. You're welcome to come. Uh, trust me, it's not just all caves and stuff like that. You will be able to enjoy the same things you enjoy here, but you'll be just a few miles away from the villages and you'll be able to connect with uh, black, the real essence of black in terms of the source, right? And then maybe your outlook uh, may be a little bit influenced a little bit in the direction of unity for us, right? As opposed to anything that will create division, even if you're right. You know, when you're right can also create division. I say that all the time on this platform. You could be right and you're creating division. That means everything you do is going to work against you. Same thing is applicable in a marriage. You could be right and be actively creating a division, right? So. But I know that there's also issues with blacks in the diaspora, especially Africans and African Americans. I've made hundreds of videos about this, more ruthless than what you may have heard about it on Tariq Nasheed's channel, talking about people in the African community and their disrespect of black Americans. But let me just tell you, you know, because I lived. Um, I came to Poland to, to, to go to medical school and, I, and I, I did graduate, but I was dealing with the African community head on um, because wait, wait, did you pick that up? He graduated from medical school, right? So for those of you that think that O'Shea Duke Jackson is a dusty, he graduated from medical school. By the way, just because you're educated and you're very smart and you have I, IQ doesn't mean you're not a dusty, just FYI. <laughs> When you live in the black community abroad, there is no African-Americans, you know. When I'm going to London, there's no African-Americans. When I'm in Germany, there's no African-Americans. When I'm in Poland, everybody's African. So I, I've learned to understand who I'm dealing with. I've learned to understand, um, you know, some of the things about the African people. And, and I look for the similarities in us instead of what we're disagreeing with. And let me tell you, there are going to be people in any section that are going to talk. That's all I'm suggesting let's look for the common goals and let's work together that's it okay if you read disrespect in that then your problems are beyond this platform simply block this platform don't come back again <laughs> okay if all you read from what i just said is condescension you need to block this platform don't come back again it's pointless right because again I know that there are people that no matter what you say, all they hear is condescension. That's all they hear. They always feel something is about to attack them, right? Uh, and maybe what I'm saying right now sounds condescending to them. I mean exactly what I am saying. What I am saying is that I'm suggesting, just like a foundational black American, which is Dick Jackson, let's look for the common goal. Let's have a conversation from that standpoint. Okay? Now, uh, the cheetah eater, cheetah pee conversations, that's banters. I'm all for that. I like the smoke too. Talk shit about you. There are going to be those disgruntled, low performing, okay, people in the African diaspora that are going to have bad things to say about African Americans. All right. And here's my point to Tariq Nasheed. He raised $2 million. How many of them talking shit about African Americans? can raise $2 million. And I'm not telling people to just sit back and just take abuse from anybody. I'm talking about in Tariq Nasheed's case, all right? You know, the guy's already raised $2 million. You know, we're talking to trolls on, in the Twitter chat room who can't even raise $2, maybe. $20, $200. That's my point because- I, I, I mean, I, I, easy, 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 right? Uh, everyone in the chat rooms are not trolls. Like, you, like social media it con contain consist of people human beings like you and i among them the loudest are usually the trolls usually not always but the truth is that some of those people are the ones that donated as well in fact i am guessing that they probably use a gofundme platform to raise all of that money right that means they came from online as well right so we, we're very quick to blame social media and trolls online for like this is a great tool that we can use to perpetuate perpetuate the message or good messages even more. So I just want to push back against that real quickly. You would never find somebody in the other community who's successful at raising $2 million, even being in the same room 
as an unsuccessful troll like that. And I'm gonna tell you why we like these roast sessions. And you know me, I get my roast on too. I'm not as good as the, 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 the top elite, you know, with the simple to pee and Tariq Nasheed, right? I'm number three. I can no, Oshie is extremely good at the roasting. I'm a big fan of his channel. Um, his channel is supposed to be Manosphere channel. Like, nah, he's a, he's a YouTuber. He's a hell of a YouTuber. He's very good at what he does. I've stumbled into three of his different channels, huge subscriber base, that he's actively building this as a business from literally thousands of miles away from America. So um, don't get it twisted. Don't ever get that twisted. Uh, he's very good at roasting. I enjoy him roasting other people. Um, I did push his neck a little bit uh, on my last video about him because he was taking unnecessary sides uh, between the lead attorney and, and Nick at night. But I like O'Shea, you know, and uh, this is a good video, actually. But he's going to make some boo-boo towards the end. Let's keep watching. Still get, I, I, I still got some smoke, but I ain't good as those guys, all right? But the reason why we love the smoke sessions and the roast sessions with these other immigrants and other groups, I'm going to tell you why that is. Because that's the only power that we have. Because many of us are living in the past. And I'm going to say some things that's going to make y'all upset. And as an African-American, for the people who did, who've done things for me, those who set the standard for my life, my great-grandmother came. Um from Natchitoches, Louisiana during the Great Migration to California, as well as my grandmother. My other grandmother came from Bastrop, Louisiana. See, they didn't have the opportunities that I have to be able to go to school. You know, my mother went to UC Davis. She was the first benefactor of what happened in the Great Migration. Because see, those people did something for us so that I can benefit now. A lot of people argue on the FBA hashtag ADOS, we built this country. No, our ancestors were the ones that did that. We haven't done nothing in the last 30. Oh, yeah. If, you, and I, and if you're an African, listen to me. Never say what he just said. <laughs> okay. Never say that. Okay. Never say, hey, you didn't be. In fact, I can't say it because I don't want anybody to cut it up as a sound bite and say, hey, that guy is attacking or he's full of shit. Okay. I don't think you have the right to say that. But again, he's foundation of black American, so he can say whatever he wants. Years. That's why we're living in the past. And everybody else is living in the present and we're getting our asses kicked so because we don't teach people how to treat us because also to be fair that's a little bit out of context so of course when people say they built this country they're talking about their ancestors right so um yeah we as a black community don't work with our brothers and sisters because we don't treat our black women and our black men with respect and I, even i'm guilty of that at times okay i've done that you see Oh, how is that for accountability, right? How is that for some accountability for the great O'Shea Duke Jackson? When they come over here and they see how we treat each other, then they start treating us like we treat ourselves. And then we want to get mad, talk about words of disrespect because we are not doing what the forefathers told us to do. Okay, Africans, never give that terrible excuse. Don't say because you attack each other, I have the right to attack you. Please don't do that. Don't do that, okay? That's terrible. Uh, but you know, uh, O'Shea is busy simping to us here. I think we can, we can, we can handle that. <laughs> we didn't follow what John Henry Clark told us to do. We didn't do what Amos Wilson told us to do. We did what we wanted to do. And now people are coming over here with more discipline than us, beating us at our own game. Now you want to be mad at them. And I get it. We can go back and roast them. But you know what that's showing? That we don't have no real power because all we got is a roast. We told them off. You think that's going to change how the way Ethiopians feel? How Somalians feel? Well, we kind of already established that uh, Tariq Nasheed at least has a little bit more power than just roasting. He's raised $2 million. He's built a, a, a massive movement from, you know, fighting for reparations, uh, for foundation of black Americans consisting of um, Native Americans, uh, black Americans that were exploring before uh, the powers that be took over and the black Americans that, that were descendants of slaves, right? So we, he's proven that he's a little bit more than roast, but that nigga can roast people. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I got a better solution. And I appreciate the work that the brother Tariq Nasheed was able to do because he was able to get $2 million from a sleeping giant and we got more to give to do things to develop our community. So that's just a little, that was, that was, that was, that was light work. And he did that with only 157,000 subscribers here on YouTube. But you know what we need to do? Instead of going back and forth with these little roast sessions, 
How about you start pulling your people up every day? How about you start... Uh, but to be fair, the roast session is attracting attention to the movement, right? But I've also had other sessions where I say, hey, if, if your roast is overwhelming the actual message, that can backfire, right? But let's be fair. The roast session can absolutely attract attention and then you can filter, filter out whatever uh, your, main, your main goal is from that situation, right? Uh, we all need attention. Uh, when we are running some kind of business or maybe a non-charity organization, um, he's been accused of uh, trademarking Foundation of Black Americans. But again, that's neither here nor there. Creating opportunity with your people. How about you start going into business with your people and elevating the standard so that our people can respect it? How about you start doing that? All right, like the Jews do, like Chinese people do. They make sure their people can get in high. All right, so that's some of the good talking points that can come out of Manosphere. The idea of business, the idea of building business, the idea of building ourselves, the idea of building empires, right? Um, the name of my company is My Empire Pro. The idea of building, 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 building. Stop spending so much time talking about women, right? So that's about the good things, conversations that can come out of the manosphere. And O'Shea Duke Jackson is one of the people that's uh, pushing that uh, in this space. Positions, they get the skills qualified that's necessary for people to respect them. So when people dish you, you have what the Jewish have, the non, the, the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League. Because see, they ain't got to go on Twitter and roast folks. You see, because you know better than to talk to them. So I have a question for us black people in general. Do we spend a lot more energy on... Uh, on, on activist activism than and then taking power and building empires do as black people in general both africans uh, both on diaspora both uh, continental pan-africanism do we spend a lot of energy on activism more in general do you notice that we do that i think that's what he's speaking to here for all of us basically crazy right because their people own industries See, we have a lot of, a lot, of, a lot of situations and stuff like here in America that we could be doing, pulling our people into those things. Our HBCUs, we don't support them. We haven't had a new medical school in black America since 1972. But now here we- Well, as you can see, I'm scroll, I was scrolling through the comments as I was watching it as well on that screen. And there was somebody that actually pushed against him in the comment and they mentioned like four different HBCUs that are active in medical schools right now. So, um, I don't know. W which one is true? Are there medical schools that are HBCUs out there? I think there are, right? I think there's probably one in Atlanta, I think. We are wanting to roast other people. Now, I get that. We can do it, and it might be warranted when people talk too much trash. But at the end of the day, it's not going to make them change how you feel about you. You need more productive African Americans because we've had African Americans in the city of Philadelphia running the city. In the city of Detroit, right in the city. Well, we need more productive Africans and African Americans. It's not just African Americans that are falling behind. Africans, African countries on the continent are falling behind. You, you see them, they're not producing, they're not producing enough. So they find themselves every four years in the quote unquote democratic countries voting for the wrong people because they depend on scrumps from the politicians to feed themselves. And the only way around that is if they produce more, because for as long as you're not producing, you will end up subjecting yourself to your to, to your superiors. Unfortunately, at this point in time, it's the, it's the white supremacy, right? So it's not just black Americans, to be fair. It's black people, period, around the world. Every day is something new, but you've still got to get a hit. We, we've had the opportunities in Memphis in jackson mississippi and we all know how that turned out you see if we really want to have a conversation then why are we at the bottom what are we doing that keeps at the bottom i'm not worried about what two or three million africans may or may not be saying about me or even his i don't even listen to that i don't care anything about that because i know my people are a very special people if you don't like it at an individual level that should be the case so if you're black american you're an african person you really shouldn't be too concerned about what people are saying about your group people if it doesn't if it doesn't apply you should let it fly at an individual level but if you have a movement and you feel like people have this uh uh generalistic disrespect for your movement then you can it's okay to speak up against that there's nothing wrong with that uh because those rhetorics can absolutely destroy the goal of your movement 
So this is for the foundation of Black America. You feel like Africans are saying certain things and they, they have this utmost disrespect when they come into the conversation. You have the right to push against that because if it was otherwise, the same thing would be applicable, right? I just don't care because you know what? When I come to Africa and I'm carrying the African-American brand, I'm getting a lot of love because of what people have done for me in my life. Exactly why I am inviting everybody to Africa. If you're a black American, listen, the love is mad. If you're coming from the United States to, Af to Africa, oh my God, you will change your mind. You will change your rhetoric. You will change your outlook. You will look for solutions as opposed to spending too much time on highlighting the problems of the relationship. Because of the success that our folks had in the past. Are, are you living that success? Because you know what, the life I'm living right now, my grandma couldn't live this life. My mom wasn't afforded, able to live this life, but because of what my family and what the people before did for me, even when I was in the, um, um, I'm, I'm 13, 14, we had deacons at our church that I came all the way from, you know, uh, Mobile, Alabama and Jackson, Mississippi and Little Rock, Arkansas, places like that, parts of Tennessee that moved because they came to McClellan Air Force Base in North Highlands and they came in the Navy and things like that. And they talked talk to young black men like me, want me to be somebody. Can you imagine them having some roast sessions with people because they don't, because they don't like them? You, it is your job to pull your people up and then you make people respect you because you pulled your people up. Not because you roasted them to death, but because you pulled them up and you respect your people, you respect your legacy, you respect your businesses, you respect your economy. Is it their fault that our money stays in the black community for six hours and it leaves? That ain't their fault. That's our fault. That's real. That is so real. You know, the same thing I just said about Africans, right? If you don't have economy power, you end up depending on the political power. And then you end up having to vote as a general, maybe not you as an individual, as a, you vote for the wrong people, right? But when there's economy power, right, you have better choices. You probably will be less concerned about the political power and naturally you will vote for the right leaders, you know? So when somebody says that black women have, you know, all these kids out of wedlock and they mention it, is it, is it our fault? We get mad, of course, I would get mad too because they're hurt because it's true. We are the worst generation of producti productivity in the African-American race ever. Right? Let me add on to that. As Africans, as black people, period. Okay? Yes, I'm making this all inclusive. We have to do better. Okay? As, not just as black Americans, as black people, period. Okay? It's very easy to point at the Nigerians that are doing better in, the, in America as the, you know, minority group with the highest number of people with PhD. What about across board, black people in general? What about all of those millions of millions of people in uh in africa 50 countries right what about them right africa is not doing good we know that are we gonna cap about that <laughs> right so hey we gotta make this all inclusive we gotta make this and i think that's that's where the conversation needs to be heading without discounting what uh the reparations and all the rights that the uh that the foundation of black americans are fighting for or aid us right now that's the facts we don't want to look at that but we are in comparison to the people of our past we are the biggest embarrassment in this generation to our ancestors it's the truth and the way that we want to get around that is by roasting people you can't roast being unproductive i'm sorry you can't and that goes for any other immigrant group that has something to say about us if i mean yes you can you just roasted being unproductive <laughs> oh shit literally just roasted being unproductive right but i'm just making it all inclusive black people in general we needed to hear this right so kudos to him for we want video. them to stop talking let's get productive let's start kicking ass let's start getting into these little things start owning businesses start owning our own colleges supporting our own colleges so they don't be closing down okay so our hbcus don't close down like they did before in atlanta then we can talk based off our achievements we are not achieving which is why we're roasting Okay, so guys, what do you think? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. O'Shea Duke Back Jackson. Back at it again. Back another Back at it again. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate you. We're gonna call it a day. Uh, I will try to come every Tuesday and Thursdays at 5 p.m. and um, the rest of it. 
I'll be releasing, dropping videos, clips and stuff like that. Please engage those videos, share them, like them, subscribe, suggestions. What do you think? What are your suggestions? How can you help us to build the platform? But thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, thank you so much. I will see you at the top. Bye for now.